lastly, you can uh, raise the hand and we can uh, let folks speak. So back to you. Okay. Uh, if the recording started late I, or we were just noticed late of the recording, um, for the record, for people watching the recording, all they've missed so far is the instructions on Zoom meetings. Uh, and we're moving to the pledge. And if the recording started late for you, that's all you've missed. Okay. Oh, and uh, th sorry, through the chair. We do have uh, two public comments that came in. One will be under item 6B and the other we will read uh, under uh, item five. Okay, those are comments by email? Uh, correct. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, before we go to the pledge, uh, I think I just got a text from uh, Commissioner Lee saying that she needs a link and a password. Um, so maybe someone could forward her the panelist uh, sure. link and we'll proceed. Um, Hopefully uh, Ms. Brewer will be able to do that. Yeah, and she can catch up by Sorry, the time um, we're done doing the pledge. Uh, Sorry, Chair, uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Lee is uh, in the attendees right now if uh, Stephanie can promote her, the panelists. I see her in the attendees. Thank you. See. Got it. Yeah, okay. All right. It looks, like, it looks like she's just arrived. Very good. Hello, Commissioner Lee. You're here just in time for the pledge. You have not missed much at all, okay? Oh. So with that, uh, let's proceed to the Pledge of Allegiance. Hopefully we have a flag. Yeah. Uh, I can, Grab mine if uh, if we you don't have, have it handy. Ready? Yeah, give me Why one. Why don't you second. go ahead and grab? All right, give me uh, five seconds here. I had trouble logging in, so sorry about that, everyone. No worries. I don't have any student volunteers tonight, so uh, I'll need someone else to lead in the pledge. Um, Commissioner Lee, if you don't mind, uh, I'll be, you can pledge, I'll be holding, holding it here. You can make sure, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, with that, we can proceed to the roll call. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. We're good. Okay, uh, Commissioner Ribello? Here. Commissioner Lee? Here. A Vice Chair Martos? Here. Chair Wetton? Here. Okay, thank you, we're all present. Um, and now let's proceed to the approval of minutes. Uh, first is the uh, approval of minutes for our April 8th meeting. Uh, I had one comment, which I already shared with Ms. Brewer, which is uh, not, not a correction of her, of her memorialization per se, but there are two instances in the meeting where I referred to the um, potential conversion of a lot to town square. I kept, I referred twice to it being lot J and I, that was a mistake on my part. Uh, I should have referred to it as lot E. Uh, so I, I don't have an objection to the way the minutes were written, but I just wanted to note the correction for the record that I was referring to the wrong lot in those two instances. Uh, was there any one else who had any, um, edits or quick corrections to the minutes uh, 
that they haven't already been able to share before we proceed. Okay, hearing none, uh, is, is can I have a motion? So is it the April minutes? Yeah, a motion on the on approving the April minutes. I move we approve April minutes with corrections. Someone willing to second? I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Rebelos. All in favor? And I guess we do a roll call, so. Commissioner Rebelos? Aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Vice Chair Martos? Aye. Chair Wetton? Aye. Motion carries 4001. Okay, proceeding to the May 13th minutes. Uh, were there any additional comments to those minutes? Okay, uh, is anyone willing to move to approve them? I move we approve the May minutes as written. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. Very good, okay. Uh, let's proceed to roll call, all in favor. Commissioner Rebellos? Aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Vice Chair Martos? Aye. Chair Wetton? Aye. Motion carries 4001 again. Okay, the May minutes are approved and we can proceed to public comments. Members of the public may speak on any item not on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to suggest an item for a future commission agenda may do so during this public comment period. The Ralph M. Brown Act, state local agency open meeting law prohibits the commission from acting on any matter that is not on the agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes each. The commission chair may adjust the time limit in light of the number of anticipated speakers. Okay, I, am, I know we at least have that one email uh, and we do have a few attendees. Uh, if you're an attendee and you wish to give a comment, you can try and raise your hand using the Zoom tool, I believe. Uh, we'll start with the email since I don't see any hands raised at the moment. Okay, thank you. Um, so we received an email from Jim Evans and it reads, um, I'm Jim Evans living at 1915 Devereaux Drive and regularly walk my dogs around the corner to Vernal. Since schools have resumed with in-person learning, I have noticed an increased number of cars ex uh, exceeding the 25 mile per hour speed limit along the Long Street roadway section between Devereaux and Adeline. This seems to mostly happen between the hours of 2.30 and 4 p.m. I don't see this every day, but enough that I think a little selected enforcement would be of some benefit. I appeared before your commission a few years ago to comment about the situation before the pandemic and the problems seem to improve. Thanks for your consideration. Regards, Jim Evans. Thank you, uh, Mr. Evans. Uh, we can't comment on that because it's, it's in the public comments. It's not on the agenda, but I'll note that there may be a future agenda item on that corner uh, in the near future. And if, if so, I, we should try and make sure that uh, we let you know. Okay. Uh, are there any other people? Asking? Chair, uh, yep. no, nothing else. All the attendees, no one has their hand raised. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at it now. Uh, so uh, hearing no interest in further public comments, I am going to close the public comments uh, item on the agenda. And we can proceed to item 6A, community BPAC update. Uh, do we, I'm, I do see Ms. Beatty uh, is here if, if she wants to, would like to share uh, an update uh, that perhaps we could promote her a panelist for this purpose. Yeah, it looks like it happened already, okay. Hey guys, sorry, I just hopped on. Um, we will hold our kind of input for the, the agenda item later on on California Drive. Okay, very good. Uh, well, that's not gonna be very long. <laughs> if there's no other updates. Well, uh, Commissioners Lee, uh, Rebelos, if you have nothing to add there, um, we can proceed to item 6B, okay? So we'll, we'll proceed to item 6B, uh, the California 
drive bicycle facility update. All right, thank you, Chair Wedden. And I'm actually gonna turn it over to Ms. Mai, our transportation programs manager to introduce our uh, the design team and uh, start that one for you. Thank you, thanks Andy. Um, good evening, commissioners. We're very excited to share with you this evening the next phase to the California Drive Bicycle Network. Join with me, I have our project design team from Mark Thomas, uh, Aaron Silva, project manager, and Rob Hines is the principal in charge. For the past 97, 94 years, uh, Mark Thomas has been providing engineering solutions, specializing in the planning and design of active transportation infrastructures that meet community needs. We are thrilled to have both Aaron and Rob assist in the design of this important segment of California Drive between Broadway and Oak Grove Avenue. This segment is also recognized by the San Mateo County Transit Authority as high priority, which is why the city was selected to receive 800,000 in grant funding for construction. Following tonight's presentation, commissioners and the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and discuss options presented. Staff is seeking feedback and a motion in support of a preferred alternative to advance to the next stage of design. And with that, um, if we can allow Aaron to share screen. Just waiting on that um, approval. Go ahead and give it a try. You might be able to. Just as it's been disabled. Oh, okay. Now it just gives me options on advanced sharing options, who can share, only host. It looks like maybe I was given authority to select who can share a screen. I think Ms. Brewer still has commanded this. I, I have the same thing. I've just tried to go. Okay, now I have it. Thank you guys for your patience. Can you guys uh, see my screen? Yes. Great. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Thanks for uh, your time uh, to go over some of the details on California Drive. Uh, like Alicia said, uh, this project goes from Oak Grove to Broadway along California Drive, which uh, parallels the Caltrain tracks. Um, this has uh, been identified as a high priority project, both in the city's general plan and the recently completed bicycle and pedestrian master plan. And uh, during the master plan uh, development, there was a virtual open house, which some uh, concepts were shared. And uh, the, the result was uh, the public had selected alternatives that provided separated bikeways and uh, had a majority of support for a lane reduction. Going quickly over some of the project goals for this segment is to improve safety and comfort for all bicyclists, um, improve signal timing at Broadway, Carmelita, and Oak Grove, um, focusing on the Broadway intersection and improving the bicycle connectivity at that, at that intersection. Uh, we recognize that there's a, 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 a the Caltrain grade separation project happening in parallel with ours, and so uh, our project will be coordinating um, our improvements to make sure that they're compatible with the future grade separation project. And then we also want to make sure that this project will align with future bikeways uh, that are planned for the corridor, especially south of Oak Grove. Moving into some of the engineering analysis, uh, we performed a traffic study. Um, the study intersections were at Carolyn, Broadway, Carmelita, and Oak Grove. And the goals were to see what the uh, result would be of removing a lane on California Drive. Shown here is a table that shows uh, existing conditions in gray uh, without the project and then with the project and a road diet. And uh, the result was a very marginal change in the delay that would be experienced. And I highlighted them in blue boxes. So what has been measured is that California Drive 
and Cal Carmelita Avenue would experience an increase in a, a few seconds of delay. Building off of that study, we evaluated two alternatives that uh, utilized a road diet or a lane reduction. And we're calling this alternative A, which proposes one-way class four bikeways or separated bikeways. And you could see that there's a bikeway on um, heading both north and south. Uh, this is a cross section looking north, um, but bikeways heading both north and south separated by a buffer and a, a vertical element uh, and parking on both sides. And then three travel lanes, uh, northbound, southbound, three lanes and a center turn lane. And the benefits with both alternatives uh, as implementing a class four bikeway is it will result in traffic calming, um, an increase in comfort and safety for cyclists. And we're talking about um, most users, uh, you know, uh, the vulnerable users are going to prefer separated bikeways as it offers uh, more comfort and separation from the vehicle lanes. And um, another element of the one way class fours is that it provides a bikeway that's adjacent to the businesses on the west of California Drive. Some of the impacts that results from this improvement would be parking loss, especially near driveways and intersections, narrow vehicle lanes. Now, when you have a buffer on both sides of the street, um, and especially when there's parking maintained, there's a minimum buffer width. And that minimum buffer width um, on both sides uh, takes up space that we're trying to stay within the existing curb to curb, and it results in uh, narrower lane widths. Additionally, there would be more conflict points with vehicles as the southbound bikeway will be crossing driveways and intersections. Uh, so there's additional conflict points at that location. We developed another alternative, which propose, proposes a two-way cycle track or a class four on the east side of California Drive. And this puts cyclists all against the Caltrain right-of-way where there's no conflicts with uh, vehicle crossings. We still preserve uh, eight foot parking um, on both sides of the street. And uh, we have uh, the preferred lane widths that we've heard from emergency services uh, for the through lanes at 12 feet um, because they do that they are wider vehicles. And it is consistent with future plans of having uh, class one or class four bikeways along California Drive on the east side. Now, there are some impacts and loss of parking, um, and that's generally uh, situated around Oak Grove, where we're going to be uh, taking the two lanes and dropping it down to one lane. And so that that merge will occupy some of the parking spaces. Now, uh, focusing in on transitions for the bikeway, this is for alternative B when you have a two way class four, you really have to pay attention to how people can enter and exit. And so I'm, can you see my my hand as I move around on the screen? Um, this is focusing in at Broadway. Uh, Broadway intersection would be right here on this exhibit and uh, taking a southbound cyclist, they would be continuing in a uh, class two or buffered class two as it approaches Carmelita. And at that signal, we can transition cyclists across California and then continue south in the two-way class four. Northbound cyclists would be able to continue through that intersection and then they would be in a their dedicated bike lane or class two bike lane that's between a through lane and the right turn pocket heading up to the Broadway intersection. Now uh, we show an ultimate configuration is how this would integrate with the Caltrain project. As a result of the Caltrain project, there's gonna be some widening into the existing parking lot. And this two-way class four could then transition at Carmelita into a class one path that will continue on and around the corner. And we have a few more details uh, if there's more questions about how it integrates with the Caltrain project. Now, focusing down at the other end of California Drive at Oak Grove, it's gonna be a similar treatment. As a southbound cyclist approach Oak Grove, they would be able to cross at the signal. They would cross in their own crosswalk into a bike box, and then they could continue southbound into the existing bicycle route. The city uh, prepared a survey that was sent out on June 3rd, and it's going to be open to the 18th to gather feedback on both of these alternatives that we just presented. And within this short time frame, we received 104 responses, and you could see uh, the breakdown of the type of people responding to the survey. 
And what we've heard is about 60% of the respondents prefer alternative B, 32 responded alternative A, and there was 8% that had no preference. And in general, people are just looking for bicycle improvements on California Drive, those that fit into that category. Here's a quick schedule. Um, the public survey is gonna be open till June 18th. Uh, so we're gonna continue to collect feedback from the public. We're at the meeting today to present to the commission to receive feedback on uh, and uh, potentially a selection of a preferred alternative. Taking that feedback, our plan is to go to the council to present the information that we've gathered to date um, related to the public survey, the meeting and our engineering studies and get final approval on the alternative. And then as we move forward through project development, we're anticipating having 30% concept plans developed in the fall in which we would come back to the commission for an update and where we could present more details on the bikeways. And then uh, based on the project schedule we have now, we're anticipating being able to go out to construction in the summer of 2022. That's the end of the presentation and I'd like to open it up for any questions. Okay. Um, do I'll, I'll go through the commissioners uh, with questions. I know Commissioner Lee, uh, you had a question and then I'll proceed to give the other commissioners an opportunity. Commissioner Lee. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't know I was being called on. First, I didn't understand what a buffered class two was. If I could have an explanation on that, um, southbound at Broadway, the lane. Could you put the diagram back up, please? Sure. Yes. All right. But by that one, the, yeah, where it says Broadway, the top left. Uh huh. Said something about a buffered class two. I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah, a, a class two is a, a dedicated bicycle lane that shares the road uh, with vehicles. So it's in the vehicle space, but it has a stripe separating it. A buffer class two is, is similar to a class two, but it has additional width more than just the six or eight inch stripe. It could be anywhere from one to two feet or greater, but it has no physical separation. So that's what's different between a buffered class two versus a class four bikeway. Okay, so at, at Broadway southbound, immediately at Broadway, there'll be a, a class two. Correct. Which is a five foot painted. Yeah, there five. would be a five foot wide bikeway with a, separated by a stripe. Okay, all righty. So um, I had a few questions. I noticed at Carmelita, there's crosswalks only on one side instead of on both. So I was hoping we could have crosswalks on both sides crossing at Carmelita. It is near shopping and a train. So we need to prior, you know, equally prioritize all users of the transportation system. Um, and then how do, let's say you're heading northbound, but you're on, you're in the 10 foot wide bike lane on the east side of the road, you're heading northbound. Um, or a southbound, how, how do you cross to the other side if I want to go just, you know, the Philly sub sandwich on the other side? How am I going to cross over? Do I have to ride all the way to Oak Grove? You know, do, I think there are three streets that intersect um, between Carmelita and Oak Grove. How are we able to cross safely there with a the controlled crossing? I, I think we need to address that. Then if I'm not mistaken, there are bus stops here, perhaps a bus stop right there at Broadway heading southbound. And then there's also a bus stop at Oak Grove heading northbound just past Oak Grove. It looks to me like the bus is going to be in the bike lane on both. So we have to address those bus stops, I believe, with the design. Um, then I also noticed here, moving to the right at California Drive and Oak Grove, that our crosswalk should be perpendicular to the roadway, not this funny diagonal thing. So are we able to make those perpendicular crosswalks? And we, and we do have that bus stop we need to address so that the bus isn't in the park. You know, whether we do a 
two bike lanes or the one 10 foot one on the east side, we still have to not have the bus in the middle of the bike lane either way. And then at Oak Grove, all four intersections, well, actually three intersections, I think those where the crosswalks are, it should be one directional handicap ramps, not these bi-directional for the pedestrians when we design it. So the crosswalks need to be adjusted so that your green stripe cut over is adjusted. Are you following me? Yeah, yeah I understand. Okay. I understand. And I wanted to be sure that the bike lanes actually started immediately at Broadway and immediately at Oak Grove, that there isn't a Shero merger lane thing going on for the first 100 or 200 feet. Um, <clears throat> um, and then what happens at the Morel crossing? Is that going away? Can we add a high visibility crosswalk there? Can the bikes cross at that Morel? I don't know what it's called on the west side, but on the east side, you cross Morel at Carol Ann. Is Morel on this little map where you cross, you yeah. know, and you have a pedestrian crossing signal? Yeah, so are bikes able to cross there? Do they have their own signal, you know, at bike height? And then same problem at the Oak Grove, like bikes are going to need their own signal and probably their own uh, circle of, of, you know, how they cycle through. They're going to need their own cycle to get through if we do the two, the 10 foot wide bike lane on the east side. I think they'll need that. Um, did I miss anything? If we do the, and I'm, I'm kind of split. I can't decide which way I want to go. Um, on the 10 foot or the two five foot plus buffers. Um, but if we do the two five foot plus the buffer, it looks to me like we'd have room to put some kind of center divider that could perhaps have plants or catch some of our runoff water we're always trying to catch. Um, so that when you, most of our pedestrians and bikes on the north end of California Drive are getting hit by left turners. <clears throat> Very soft, like 60 degree, 70 degree, fast left turn into the pedestrians or bikes as they're in the crosswalk or the bike lane there. So if we can have a center boulevard, even if it's three feet wide, and make it all the way up to the intersection, then vehicles turning left would have to make a sharper left turn to get around that center divider. Um, if we did the, and I've been in Spain and they have the bike lanes on the right side of the parking. So I, I liked it a lot when I was there. Um, then I think we would have to red curb some of the parking places over there. Um, before and after each driveway and before and after each street, and then put a lot of green paint where the driveway is so that people are, drivers are highly alerted that there's um, a crossing there for bikes and, and pads. And those are my thoughts at this point. But we can't forget the pedestrians either in this plan. Right, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner uh, Rebelos, did you have any comments at this at this juncture or questions? Yes. Um, so, beginning with the uh, northbound California at the Oak Grove intersection, I also want the crosswalks to be straightened out not at an angle. And that I noticed that uh, pr probably from an engineering perspective, I don't know if it was part of the signal plan for that intersection, but that uh, southeastern uh, corner would need to bring that curb out into the intersection to shorten that crosswalk. And I agree that the wheelchair ramps should be, there should be two on each corner going into the crosswalks. And then the high visibility crosswalk, I think would be in either A or B. Well, I should have started, I, I should have prefaced my, my preference for B before I, I mentioned the intersection of Oak Grove and 
California. But in either alternative A or B, I think we, we need that high visibility crosswalk at Morrell and maybe consider uh, some sort of strobes there or something indicating that bikes may also be crossing there. Um, I do have uh, concerns. I, I, I do, like, I, as I said, I, I have a preference for B, but I have concerns about, uh, I, well, I want to know more about how that crossing at Carmelita for the southbound cyclist is going to work. Uh, and the reason that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, leaning to B is because I noticed there's only three intersections between Carmelita and uh, Oak Grove, but there's a lot of driveways. And I actually walked that area today to really get a, a feel of it. And there is a lot of driveways there and, there, and most of them are very active. Uh, a lot of them are auto uh, related businesses. I also uh, feel that a southbound cyclist, when they arrive at Oak Grove, it's, if, if they're going to go to the left on Oak Grove to Washington Park or to the school, I think that is a safer route. I do have questions though, because there, the, this, I think it was in the staff report referenced that this sort of fits into future plans. And so I wonder once we go south of Oak Grove eventually, what that means exactly. Do we intend to continue those lanes on the east side of California on beyond the Caltrain station and, and down to uh, the San Mateo city limit. Uh, and, and what about north of Broadway? Uh, is there something that's going to happen potentially on the north of Broadway along California that would bring those bike lanes to the uh, east side of California and, and do a, a two-way bike lane? Uh, those are my questions, but uh, my, but I, I think uh, my thoughts, uh, some of them echo uh, uh, my fellow commissioner Lee. Uh, and then uh, that's basically it for me. I don't have any other concerns about that, but I definitely prefer B at this point. Before I uh, go to Commissioner Martos, Commissioner Lee, did you have a clear preference between A and B? That, that we missed, I, I don't know if I came away from your comments. And, uh, and you can, we'll, we can circle back if you, if you don't have a clear answer right now. I, I, I believe it goes with Commissioner Revelos. If there is plans to extend an eastbound two-way bike lane all the way down to the donut shop and then north up to BART, taking some of the Caltrain land or easement, then I, I'd, I'd be in favor of that. Um, but if it's only six blocks of this and then you have to jig jog again back over to the right side of the road if you're southbound, um, then I don't see an advantage to it. Then I would do alternative A. I guess that's a question for staff. Where are we leaning going forward um, with that? Uh, are we able to get more of the Caltrain right of way for bike lane or is all have to be on the road and then that won't work by the own roundabout that I'm aware of. So staff, what do you, what do you think? Cause I don't know if I'm A or B, it kind of depends on the length of this bike route. Through the chair. Please. Um, for tonight, we are just focused on Broadway to Oak Grove. What's happening North will is part of the master plan. I mean, ultimate, there's the ultimate build out where there is, you know, not necessarily talks, but there's a discussion of how we obtain that additional right of way to have uh, a two way facility north of Broadway. And then uh, later on, as we go on using the bike pad master plan, we'll look at what happens south of Oak Grove all the way to uh, San Mateo Drive. That's the, the last kind of link after this segment. First, you know, years ago, as the commission knows, we started off with north of Broadway. There was no bicycle facility there. We have bicycle facilities there now. Then we've 
we're focusing on this next section. And then the last section will be north of uh, Peninsula, uh, trying to see how we tie into San Mateo's, uh, uh, San Mateo Drive facility that they've just recently striked. So hopefully that answers that. But sorry, I didn't mean to jump into errands, but that was something. Oh no, I appreciate it. Thank you. So I'm gathering that there's no plans for for getting more right of way south of Oak Grove at this time to get down to the donut shop, at least with a 10 foot bike way. Correct. We haven't done any work on that yet. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, uh, Vice Chair Martos, uh, you've been waiting patiently. Do you have any thoughts or questions at this point? Yeah, when you go late in the panel here, a lot of those questions have already been asked, but I'll, I'll go back to them again. <clears throat> First question I had for Mr. Silva, um, when this was presented to the public, uh, I thought there were three alternatives and the public was in favor of alternative three. Did we then take the top two and um, those become alternatives A and B, which we're seeing tonight? Yeah, so alternative A is what was discussed in the bikeway master plan. And when we realized that a lane reduction was feasible, um, together with the city, we developed a uh, alternative that accomplished the same goal as providing a separated bikeway, but positioned it just on the east side of the road. So that wasn't part of the original outreach at uh, part of the bikeway master plan. Okay, so I'm assuming alternative B correlates with alternative three. Is that right? Alternative A correlates with alternative three that was in the virtual open house for the bike master plan. Oh. And so that so the public favored alternative three, which is now alternative A, is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, and then we did a, uh, let's see, we did a survey. And in that survey, the favorite was alternative B? Correct. Okay. So it was a new alternative that wasn't presented prior. Um, it still provides separated bikeways just positioned on the east side of the road. Understood. So the, the hmm. so we, we've got two different surveys in essence. We, we had the one that the public selected alternative A, um, which was alternative three. And then we have the, the online survey in which the public favored alternative B. Am, am I getting that right? Correct. Okay. So give me some numbers. So when we went public with this and you know people showed up and they looked at everything or whatever they did. How many people voted for alternative A? I think it was 63% of the respondents voted for alternative A. Now the variation to which is alternative two, I guess from the bikeway master plan, though they all provided separated bikeways, there was trade-offs whether it was going to remove on-street parking, remove a lane, or try to squeeze it all in. So in general, the goal that was identified in the bike master plan was to provide separated bikeways, but had different uses for the rest of the space. Right, I, I understand. Um, so numbers though, 63% of how many people that participated in that survey when people showed up in person. Yeah, I don't have that information. Um, okay. At the top of my head, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, then I don't know if you'll have this answer either, but uh, you know, I'm curious about the commuters and what did the commuters, the eight commuters in the online survey, what did they favor? Which alternative A or alternative B? Yeah, we could. Um, I, I I could get that information. Okay. Well, I'm sure. Let's see. We have 19 people. Hopefully, there are commuters in the 19 people. So when we hear from the public, we'll hear more. Um, I want to hear from the public before I make a decision. Um, and then my colleagues talked about the integration, and I don't quite understand the integration. If if we were to go with that. Uh, class four bike way, 
how that would integrate with what San Mateo's already done, some more it's going to have to branch out um, or split off um, since they have a bike lane on either side of the road, north and south bound. Um, and I, I agree with my um, fellow commissioner Lee that I, I don't, I, I don't like going from a, a bike way to a separated bike facility, one on each side of the road. Um, and so I'd really want to understand a little better what the plan is on the, uh, the San Mateo end mostly. Uh, I think uh, north of Broadway, we already have a Shero on, on both sides. Maybe it's a lane. Um, one north, one south. Um, so, how if we went with a if we went with this uh, this class four bike lane, um, then how would you merge that? And and where you know hypothetically would you make the transition from the bikeway to splitting it off where it intersects San Mateo's? facility at Peninsula Avenue. Mr. Wong or Mr. Silva, either one of you, any thoughts on that? Um, I'll, I'll hop in real quick, Aaron. If you look at the slide right here uh, to the right, or the uh, alternative B, if you look at the uh, last one to the right, it'd be something similar to that if we had a class two or a, a two-way facility on one side, you'd have the uh, what do we call that? The uh, I can't remember the name of the two phase crossing where you would stop there. You would go when the uh, signal turns allows you to cross California and then you'd wait there until southbound California went. That said, uh, the reason we partially these are in different segments is the right of way and that we have to use. Uh, where does it begin? Uh, just north of uh, Peninsula is very different than what we have here. We may have similar number of lanes, two lanes in each direction, but those lanes are much narrower than the parking is. So again, we're gonna revisit, we're gonna look at that at a later project as part, as part of the bike ped master plan improvements. But uh, as of right now, uh, we, we have ideas, but we're not gonna be able to do it until we find out what we can do lane road diets, lane diets, whatever on that section of California. Does that help answer? Yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, I, I, I understand that's probably what's gonna have to happen. Um, all right, so um, the, the Carmelita um, crossover there, um, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? I think Commissioner Rebellos asked about that, and, and I'd like to hear a little more about that transition from two lanes to a, a bikeway. Sure. So um, it, the transition uh, really happens in the southbound direction only. If you're a northbound cyclist, you would continue on and the transition pretty seamlessly from the two-way facility to its own one-way class two bike lane. Now in the southbound direction, if this light is green for through traffic, cyclists would continue through and then queue up in a bike box. So it's considered a two-stage left turn. And there, uh, we have yet to design the signal, but there could be a pedestrian or bike activated push button, or it would go with the phase on Carmelita when uh, traffic is uh, making a left. Um, we could uh, cross cyclists over um, and then into the two-way facility to continue south. Similar treatment would happen at Oak Grove as they approach uh, Oak Grove. Uh, they would queue up here. This would be the end of the two facility. Um, there could be a bicycle push button. Right now we're showing a small island here that separates uh, the bikeway from the through traffic, there could be a, a push button that could activate a cross signal for bikes to cross and then continue on on the curb side of the street, um, continuing south on California. 
Okay, thank you. That's helpful. And then the last question I had was these um, aesthetically pleasing diagonal crosswalks. I don't know if that's why they were done that way, but maybe you can explain why they were laid out diagonal as opposed to 90 degrees across California. Yeah, and this is always a challenge when we have screwed, skewed roadways. Uh, if you could picture starting at this corner and going perpendicular, that would put the curb ramp well beyond the intersection. And the issue with putting it back here is that right turning vehicles don't see pedestrians when they're making a right turn. So if a, a pedestrian or a cyclist were queued up here and getting ready to cross, uh, this right turn could potentially be accelerating around the corner um, into where a pedestrian would be crossing the street. And so we try to get people out to the corner as much as possible, but it does make the crossing uh, longer. And that's a, a balance that we try to take. Um, if this was dual curb ramps, there's a potential that we could maybe not get it quite 90, but correct the skewed crosswalk to be a little more 90 degrees to the street. Okay. I knew there was some sort of engineering reason why it was done that way. So I appreciate that, Mr. Silva. Uh, those are all the questions I have right now. Thank you, Vice Chair Martos. Um, I, I only have, I think, uh, a quick question, which is looking at the, in alternative B, the starting at Broadway before you get to the Carmelita uh, crossover as proposed, it, it looks like you do have about nine or 10 parked cars that would be parked adjacent to the southbound bikeway on California. We've, you know, I know north of Broadway on California, there's, <laughs> this has been a um, controversial point about the width of, of those bikeway, bikeways and the potential for door zones. And I, I just wanted to know how, why do you anticipate it that particular stretch of lane to be is that would that be eight feet or seven feet yeah let me go um, back to the cross section so we would have uh eight foot of parking um now it would be uh curb adjacent um and so in this case the reason why we kept the bike lane on the outside of the parked cars is uh, solely for the purpose that when the Caltrain project gets constructed a couple years um, after this, these improvements, we were, were uh, considering the idea of keeping the bike lane curb adjacent all the way through and have parked cars pushed out into the street so it'd be a, a separated by parked cars. However, when the Caltrain project comes through, then uh, those cars would return back curbside. And so instead of to avoid pushing them out with our project and then the Caltrain project coming and pushing them back curbside, we decided it would be best to restrike the roadway to keep them on the outside. Um, there is always a concern with door zones, especially when you have narrow parking and narrow bike lanes but the city is not looking to acquire right of way as part of this project. And so we're trying to work within the curb, curb to curb width. Uh, so, but just to follow that lane that you're contemplating there and that stretch between Broadway and Carmelita, would that be eight feet or would it need to be uh, narrower? The so just to go over the dimensions, you'd have an eight foot parking, you would have a five foot bike lane, and you would have a 12 foot travel lane. Hey, Aaron, can you check that quick? I mean, can you zoom in? The dimensions are shown, but that doesn't look right because that's 11 foot through lane. Okay, let me. Uh... Yeah, it's a little pixelated, but you're correct, Rob. Let me correct that seven foot parking six foot bike lane, 11 foot through lane. So there's a wider bike lane through that area. Okay, so, I mean, six feet is still kind of narrow, right? Uh, if you're next to parked cars. So it's something, it's something to consider. Um, I, I, I wanna go to public comment, but you know, also I think it's worthwhile to just say, I'm leaning 
towards alternative B. I think one thing about these uh, surveys is they probably under sample potential high school riders. I think if you are a potential high school rider, uh, there's some significant advantages to be. Um, I think not having to cross, first of all, this whole issue between Broadway and Carmelita could be a non-issue because a lot of high school riders could come down Carmelita uh, and never even be in this piece of the intersection. Uh, the, secondly, I think not having to cross California Drive at Oak Grove is an advantage. You know, our, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, the meetings we had in February and March where we were considering, where we have been considering and I believe moving forward with uh, new signalization in the Oak Grove, uh, California Drive intersection. I think there's gonna be a little bit of complexity uh, there from traffic. So I think reducing the number of uh, people crossing uh, is helpful uh, and e easier. Again, for, for school children, I think it's easier to get through. Um, I'm a little concerned about what we just discussed in terms of the, na the narrow uh, width of the bike lane uh, between Broadway and Carmelita southbound. Um, so I hope we might take a careful look at that and see if, the, if there's something we could be, that could be done there. Um, because I know that is a dangerous condition uh, and will affect how, how this thing is received. Um, that's all I have. I know we have public comment um, and I could go to that now. Um, I see a hand up for, and forgive me, uh, I hope I'm getting this right, Mr. Modashemi. Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you very much, actually. Um, my name is Ryan Modashemi. I'm a, uh, someone who bikes on this corridor and also drives on this corridor. Um, I just wanted to say that I think it's good that the only options here are for the protected bike lanes. I think we should have stronger separation than just the bollards. Families would feel safer if you have stronger barriers that actually present, prevent a car from coming in. So stronger separation would be good. I think it's a shame that we're not studying the rest of the corridor south to Peninsula Avenue right now, because we would want to know what the rest of it is looking like before figuring out which side to put the bike lanes on. That being said, I think we should continue moving forward with this so we get something somewhere. I think that's good. I think in general, we move too slowly on these projects and I would like to see more improvements faster. I think we can avoid going through CEQA, through CEQA exemptions, through SB 288. So that might be something to consider for future projects. Um, I think alternative B reduces conflicts with driveways and intersections but it also makes it more dangerous to access the bike lanes because riders, including children, would have to cross three lanes of high-speed traffic at unsignalized, uncontrolled intersections when accessing the lanes from the neighborhoods west of California Drive. Um, so I still like Alternative B for a lot of reasons. I think if the Alternative B is adopted, uh, or if any alternative is adopted, it must include protected intersections for bikes at the intersections of the streets, at the very least, like Palm, Sanchez, et cetera. It would ideally have multiple mid-block activated crossings to access businesses along the corridor on that west side. Alternative A has narrower car lanes, which is better for traffic calming. I drive on California Drive a lot, and I know that narrower lanes would force me to drive slower, decreasing the chances that I kill someone with my multi-ton vehicle. And that's why Alternative B is bad from that perspective. 12-foot lanes are just too much. Wider lanes will invite higher speed of traffic the higher traffic speeds. The lanes should be narrower also to reduce that crossing distance because we're forcing bikers to go to the other side um, in order to access those bike lanes. And it's not just me that says this, it's the National Association of Transportation Officials that recommends vehicle lanes with width of 10 feet for urban or suburban areas like Burlingame and the alternative A lane widths are 10 and a half feet. The largest fire trucks will still fit in these lanes. I think they usually have widths of 10 feet. They will have plenty of unobstructed distance to make turns with the widths of the roadway, even in alternative A. So let's reduce vehicle speeds by just slightly reducing the travel lane widths, which will reduce the number and severity of collisions with bikes and peds and reduce the need for emergency response in the first place. I also like that alternative A provides a protected bike facility for anyone who is starting their trip at one of the businesses or homes on California Drive itself. 
In alternative A, they would have to bike to an intersection. Sorry, in, in alternative B, they would have to bike to an intersection and then cross to enter the protected bikeway, making them exposed to two cars at two locations. So I'd like some way to do traffic calming um, in the southbound direction if people do choose to take the lane, for example, instead of crossing to uh, the alternative B bikeway, which I still think is in general a better thing because it makes families feel safer um, to have that fuller separation without running into all those driveways. Um, so I also think that we need bicycle and transit signal priority at Broadway and Carmelita and Oak Grove avenues, as well as any other signalized intersections that are implemented along the route. Um, under alternative B, bikes traveling southbound would have to wait for a while at the Broadway intersection, then would have to wait at Carmelita to cross the bikeway. This waiting time should be reduced so as to avoid a queue of bicycles lining up and blocking the intersection at Carmelita, which is dangerous. Um, I also like the bi-directional curb ramps that were mentioned by a few of the commissioners um, and I believe the consultant. I think that could help make the angle more perpendicular at Oak Grove Avenue. I think we should do everything we can to make um, pedestrian and bike um, uh, safety paramount in this project. And we should not be prioritizing level of service or things that make cars go faster because it kills people. And this should be a complete streets project. So uh, thank you very much. Those were my ideas. General um, support for alternative B, but I wish that we study the rest of it to Peninsula sooner. And uh, I think we definitely need those narrower travel lanes because uh, we should not be going at high speeds here. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, that was very helpful comments. Uh, Ms. Beattie, I see your hands up. So uh, if you don't mind, we can proceed. Sure, um, so thanks. Uh, you've heard from uh, a lot of the folks who were at the BPAC meeting. Um, our, our discussion was mixed. And so we had some folks who preferred alternative A um, and some who preferred alternative B. And uh, we, uh, we netted out a little bit split on it. Um, you know, a couple of things rise to the top here. The first is that everyone has said this, but without the context of what we're envisioning for the rest of the route um, or like completing, you know, getting someone from like one destination to another complete destination, it's really hard to imagine some of these things. So, um, you know, reacting to this route in absence of that other information is tough. Um, and I think everyone felt really constrained by that. So that, you know, that's feedback to the city is we don't, we don't know uh, what happens on the other side of it. Um, and so we had that feedback. And then the second one was that when we had seen alternative A, we were really, really, really concerned about the potential for um, conflict between cars and bikes along the west side of California Drive. And there are just so many cross streets and there are so many driveways that we continue to have that concern. And ultimately and that started driving people towards uh, alternative B. Additionally, we felt like, um, you know, bi biking on California Drive is, is terrifying. Um, that felt like the option that actually could legitimately get folks who don't who are scared to bike on California Drive out and using it um, because it was separated and there weren't conflicts um, with cars. And we also felt like pedestrians probably would use it as well. Um, so that it would be something that is popular for the community and, and would therefore be easier to prove the value of some of this, uh, some of this work to the public um, on a widespread basis. And so uh, that's largely where we were netting out. Um, you've heard comments about traffic with lanes. We, we also feel like we could take out the parking on the east side of California Drive um, across the street from the businesses that that's easy real estate for us to take and to give to cyclists and pedestrians, um, obviously not the parking on the west side. Um, and then the last thing is, this is my personal comment, but I hope that we aren't going to directly take the results of the survey to choose what alternative uh, we choose. I, I think, um, you know, it's good to know what people think. I think uh, it's pretty hard to look at some of these designs and for the average person to translate them into what actually something is gonna look like or envision the, the safety uh, 
complications that might arise. And I say this as a person, it's hard for me to imagine that. Um, and, and I look at these a lot, um, but I'm hoping that, you know, that the city will uh, take input from the public, but will also move forward with the design that's legitimately best for um, our complete streets and to create uh, safe ways, safe and easy ways for people to get around um, by car and bike and foot. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beattie. Uh, is there any other public comment? Uh, we received an email, if you'd like me to Oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Please. Okay. So we received a message from Madeline Frechette, and it says, uh, I'd like to thank staff for putting together this survey for this project. And I really appreciate the city's work towards getting Burlingame's first protected bicycle facility on the map. The need for truly safe, physically protected bicycle infrastructure has been validated through the multiple years of outreach and research done through our bike ped plan. And it's, it's exciting to see uh, some concepts. I hope staff and traffic commissioners continue to prioritize people's safety over parking or driving convenience in this project. I'm going to offer very lukewarm support for alternative B, uh, but have several concerns that need to be addressed in order for the design to be acceptable. Number one, alternative B provides good separation from bikes and cars, but presents a major accessibility and safety issue because people coming from the west side of California Drive need to cross major intersections to access it. Please ensure access is made uh, safe through physical changes to the street and are done in enough locations so that this facility can be adopted by people coming from multiple neighborhoods along California Drive. Please also pursue signal prioritization for bikes at these protected intersections onto California Drive. Intersections tend to be the most uh, collision prone for bikes and it cannot be overlooked. Uh, number two, alternative A proposes narrower, narrower traffic lane widths, uh, which is an effective traffic feature. But option B is missing the important safety and potentially life-saving feature. Vehicle speeds are highly correlated with survival rates among people in collisions and also the number of collisions that occur. If we care about people's safety, we will consider narrowing traffic lanes in any solution that moves forward. Number three, it's always been strange that there's no sidewalk on the east side of California Drive, especially because it's along a transit corridor and now um, we have new homes on Carolyn. Consider an accessible sidewalk on the east side of California Drive. Um, and lastly, she says, uh, these designs are low fidelity and it was difficult for me uh, to definitively say which one is better than that. Alternative B presents many accessibility and connectivity issues. Um, where are we? For example, how do people north on California Drive coming from the Millbrae Station get safely, conveniently, and in a protected facility over the two-way bike lane on California Drive? These are details that can make or break any design and especially any adoption of a new bike facility. I look forward to how these concerns will be addressed. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. Um, I'm going to give uh, our commissioners uh, one, one last pass through. And um, then one thing I'll ask is if we should consider uh, voting on this and, and passing along a suggestion to the city council based on what we've heard so far. Uh, so uh, circling back around, Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, circling back, um, I'd still like to reiterate the request for crosswalks on both sides of Carmelita. Um, controlled crossings at the streets, kind of going back to uh, Madeline's, Frechette's comment, we need to be able to cross. I guess I'm leaning to B. I one question though, I guess this is for staff. On the one layout, the horizontal street plan, it shows that alternative A has the bike lane behind to the right side of the cars. But now this that's up on the screen now for shows the bike lane on the left side of the cars. So where is the bike lane for alternative A? Where, like, is it be to the right side of the cars? Or is it like this on the left side of the cars? This graphic is for alternative B. So alternative A 
it would be curve adjacent, I could go to the cross section real quick. All right, so, so, it would, so both both directions will be curve adjacent and separated by parked cars. That's A. Okay, let's see this diagram for alternative B, please. So alternative B, everyone, you have parked cars curb adjacent, so there's no bicycle facility uh, on, on the west side. Okay. South of Carmelita, and all bicycle use will be on the east side. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So I guess I'm leaning to B. But I do see a couple of 12 foot lanes there, which is not making me happy. Um, I'd go with B if we could have those a 10 and a half foot lane travel lane. Then the center turn lane could be 10, 10 and a half foot lane, eight foot parking. And then we make that buffer of three feet bigger away from the uh, bicyclists. And then we need crossings <clears throat> at the three streets some kind of crossing that's controlled, not just run for your life uh, at the three streets where there's crossovers. So maybe it's those flashing lights or something, but um, if we want a 12 year old to ride it, they need to be able to cross where they choose instead of just dash. Um, we need to address the bus stop at Oak Grove. And then also as we head toward northbound, um, there's going to be like you're gonna need some kind of kiss and drop off, say goodbye when people drop their partners off or their friends off at the Caltrain station on, uh, on the east side of the road. People will do it, whether you build it or not, people are gonna stop and drop people off there. So we need some kind of uh, maybe get rid of some of the parking so that people can drop off <clears throat> up by the train station. Um, so narrow lanes, perpendicular crosswalks, we've got to, even if we can't make them totally per perpendicular, we've got to straighten them out and do one direction handicap ramps. Um, we can get a few feet out of all of them going each direction. Um, so to make it better, it's, it's bad the way it is. And the signal prioritization, I would go with Madeline Frechette's comment that uh, Bikes need to be prioritized and the pedestrians because um, now we're being forced to cross multiple directions just to continue a southbound or northbound path, southbound path. Um, it can't be just motor vehicles being prioritized all the time on this. Um, Commissioner Lee, I'm sorry. I just, could you clarify the, when you say this kiss and drop off is going to happen, are you talking about the, the Burlingame stop or the Broadway stop? Broadway stop. People will be pulling into along the road or into the bike lane, whichever whichever alternative we choose. Rather than, and just so I'm clear, you, you believe they'll do that even though there's a parking lot right there? There isn't a parking lot there. It's on the other side, isn't it? There's a, there isn't one is, on the you're earth. saying this, these are people heading southbound? Is that what I just want to understand? We'll drop off in the bike lanes at the Broadway station. They're going to do it. I would do it. <laughs> Even if it's all red curbed, I would do it. Oh, just jump out, honey. You know. But there, there is a large parking lot there. No, but I mean, when the. Uh... Through the chair, uh, clarification. Uh... Commissioner Lee is correct. As what, what's laid out as of the 35%, the parking lot will be relocated onto the Carolyn side. And I see. then okay. this will be, uh, yeah. I understand better. Started. Okay. Yeah, that's so helpful. We, have to plan. Okay. we just have to plan for it, Chair. It's going to happen. Um, so those are my big things making it. And I do think pedestrians will be walking. Um, along if we do alternate B, I do think pedestrians will be on the east side walking in the bike lanes. So if we narrow the roadway, make a 10 and a half feet, the driving lanes, widen the uh, three foot buffer, which I think on the other plan was only two foot, um, signalize, prioritize the bikes and make crossings at the three streets, uh, controlled crossings. So it's not just run for your life, bike for your life then I'd go with B. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. Uh, Commissioner Revelos. Okay, so could we go to the 
slide that has the little map with uh, with the alternative B, please. There we go. So I, I'm I'm still favoring. As a matter of fact, I'm favoring alternative B more than I was at the at the beginning of this. But I do have a lot of asks. Uh, some of them have sort of been confirmed as as being part of the plan, and some of them uh, are don't seem to be uh, acknowledged at this point. But uh, one of the concerns that I have is the uh, crosswalks at Oak Grove in California and, and Commissioner Matos, I appreciate uh, the, the perspective that you gave to these uh, being straightened out and, and the risk of the right turns from Oak Grove onto northbound California to pedestrians as an example. Uh, so what I would say to that is let's straighten out those crosswalks. Let's put in those ramps, uh, two on each corner going the direction of the crosswalk. And let's uh, have a no turn on red at that intersection. And that should resolve the, uh, the risk of someone making a free right turn and potentially uh, striking a pedestrian who's crossing. And if the light's green, so that, that's the other thing. I, I, how does that cycle work? So if there's, so what I want there, my ask there is I definitely want to have bike signals there. I think that the consultant said there would be bike signals, but I wanna ensure that those would be there. And then um, I really, uh, concur with uh, a lot of the folks and fellow commissioners who have uh, said that there needs to be uh, ways for bikes to cross at the intersections, the three intersections in between Carmelita and Oak Grove from the east side to the west side. But I also, uh, at the very least, at the very least, believe that there needs to be a high visibility crosswalk at the Morel crossing and, uh, and uh, preferably there would be strobes there, uh, some kind of strobes or a stoplight uh, for pedestrians crossing. Um, I like the, the, uh, the idea of the buttons. The consultant mentioned that there would be buttons at Carmelita uh, southbound and at Oak Grove uh, southbound to cross, to activate the crossing bike signal. So I, 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 in my mind, those are non-negotiable. I need the buttons and I need the bike signals. And then um, the first block of Broadway so I appreciate, uh, Mr. Chair, you, you, you pointed out that those, those lanes would be somewhat slender. So I, I looked at the, the map closely and I noticed all of those businesses on the west side of California between Broadway and Carmelita have parking lots. So I have to ask, do we need the parking spaces there at all? I don't, I, I'm not sure that they're an issue. Maybe we could just get rid of those parking spaces. We can put in the, the uh, maybe a buffered bike lane similar to what would be on the east side. I need, the, the, I need staff and the consultant to address that. Um, I think finally, um, you know, I, I, I'm not as concerned about the vehicle speeds with the 12 foot lanes. I feel like, you know, it's four lanes now, two lanes in each direction. Um, if you reduce that to one lane in each way, there's probably going to most of the time, with the exception of maybe late night, and wee hours in the morning, there's probably always going to be another car, in, you know, in front of uh, whoever's on that road. I just don't see a scenario where it's typical that there's a single car driving by itself at a high rate of speed. I think that, that it will become like um, California Drive is uh, north of Broadway 
in the sense that there's pretty much always another car ahead of you. And um, it's frankly, uh, north of uh, Broadway, I, I, I almost never can get my car up to 35 miles per hour. <laughs> so uh, I think that that would probably be the case south of Broadway onto Oak Grove. And uh, the, the only other thing is, is uh, you know, maybe to uh, my fellow commissioner, uh, Lee, uh, her point of uh, making the lanes more slender or, or doing something with a center median and a, or a pedestrian refuge island or something to keep the left turns from northbound California onto the, into the three intersecting roads, uh, keep them from kind of cutting at, a, at an angle and to make that uh, uh, degree, the, you know, the sharper degree turn, uh, maybe use some of that space rather than have 12 foot uh, wide lanes, maybe uh, use some of that space to create a uh, more fixed uh, barrier between the bike lanes and the traffic and maybe uh, some pedestrian refuges at those intersections and, and also to uh, calm the uh, left turn down, uh, left turns down so that they're not uh, banking that corner at a, uh, a lower degree. Uh, I think that's my comments though. And, uh, but I absolutely uh, at this point, I, I can't see myself going anywhere uh, with this other than with the uh, alternative B. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Rebelos. Uh, Vice Chair Martos, do you have any additional comments or questions here? Yeah, I, I do have one question. So with alternative B, the part of California West between Carmelita and Oak Grove. So if a, a bicyclist wants to bike to any of the businesses or homes on that side, um, what what's recommended there? Do they ride on the sidewalk? Do they walk on the sidewalk with their bike? Um, how, any, any thoughts on that? Either Mr. Silva or Mr. Wong? Through the chair, you're talking if, uh, for alternative B? Yeah. So alternative B and at the, at the intersections, uh, they're, they're not shown here, but there would be um, a, a crossing there. And that's where Mr. Okay. Silva is talking. It potentially could be a bike act or a ped act or button actuated. And then that's where the removal of some of the parking, we need to open those spaces up for improved visibility and to have a, a, a crossing there. But uh, Mr. Silva could add on to that, but that's how they would, they would be in that two-way facility going down and then whatever business they were interested in, they'd have to get to the closest intersection and make the crossing. Yeah, as part of this project, we're gonna be evaluating uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons. And so that was part of the original scope to evaluate uh, crossings at the unsignalized intersections. And, and that, that's part of the evaluation and it would help um, address some of those concerns about people in the two-way facilities getting across to the businesses. They would be at a, a controlled crossing. To the chair, I, I think Commissioner Marcos, if I may, I think your question also has to do with what if somebody wants to visit a shop, say about a hundred feet past the intersection, um, say south of Carmelito, how would they continue on their bicycle um, to that facility? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, so we'll, I don't, Aaron, if, if you can, I don't know if we've looked into that level of detail, um, but uh, we've, the focus has been on the intersections, how to get pedestrians across at the intersections. But that's a, a, a very good comment and question that uh, we will look into. Okay. That's all I had, Chair. 
Thank you, Vice Chair Martos. Um, I think to, um, to close this out, I mean, I, I think I, for the reasons I stated before, I, I tend to lean towards alternative B. I think the two-way bikeway um, has features that uh, make the challenges worthwhile. Uh, and I think that when we talk about kids uh, that's come up, I, I, I think the most likely kid to be biking on this is probably a high school student. Uh, and, and they will probably, uh, this if anything will reduce uh, the need to cross for, for that use case. So I like alternative B. Um, with respect to the 12 foot lanes, I guess, I just want to make sure I, I, I've definitely heard the point of view uh, and I've heard it of course before that the wider bike line, wider um, driving lanes encourage speed, but I do want to make sure we're clear that there is an all, um, a counterpoint to that, uh, that I think Mr. Wong alluded to uh, early in the presentation, but I just want to make sure we're clear on it. And maybe Mr. Wong, you can make sure I'm not making too many assumptions here, but um, did you hear from the fire department on their preferences around this? Through the chair, we did uh, work with fire and get their, got their input on the roadway widths on here. And with a single lane, their preference is to have 12 feet. I mean, right now with the, the lanes are narrower, but they're able to straddle and do what they need to. But if we're talking a single lane, their preference is to, uh, 12 feet. 12 feet, yeah. And this is our main fire station, obviously. Um, so I, I, I don't want to over-engineer it here and now, uh, I just want to make sure that both points of view are represented, uh, a, as we think that point through, uh, I would say, um, I am concerned about the very narrow bike lane plan between Broadway and Carmelita, uh, I, I, you know, without studying it further, I don't want to jump in and say, oh, we don't need that parking spot or, you know, this business doesn't need it. Um, that might be maybe a place where we accept slightly narrower lanes uh, to avoid, uh, to avoid the door zone bike lane issue. I, I feel like the last time we did a door zone bike lane, uh, it, it was extremely contentious. <laughs> Uh, so I, I'm not very enthusiastic about doing another one. Uh, so we should really think hard about how that can be avoided here. Um, and on the points around the engineering around Oak Grove and California, I think the point I would make there is we spent February and March looking at the same intersection, I believe with a different set of consultants as we were considering new signalization. Uh, so I think <laughs> there's a lot of engineering that's gonna need to get done here. Uh, and I hesitate to over engineer it uh, here. Um, I think it's something that pro I would anticipate uh, Mr. Wong, you and your team will need to go back and, and, and kind of try and make sure that the, you know, there's, everybody's looking at the same intersection at the same time and it's consistent in terms of how to handle some of these things in terms of nudging the crosswalk over or considering a uh, no turn on red. Uh, I, I think that could work maybe going uh, eastbound. I, I think it might be challenging going westbound with the tracks right behind the cars in that spot. Um, so I, I would just encourage, um, us not to get too deep in, into that without having the benefit of all the consultants who are involved in making all the changes, some of which we haven't talked about tonight, uh, working through it. Uh, we're gonna, it sounds like we're gonna get this back to Teaspoon mm -hmm. still early in the design process and maybe we can revisit those points when all, uh, all the consultants on both sides of this project have had a chance to weigh in. Um, with that, I, should we, I think it could be helpful for the city council to hear that, uh, and uh, you know, 
I, I, I will say I, I favor alternative B, notwithstanding the fact that it seems to be more popular. Um, I, I won't speak for the other commissioners, but I think it would be useful uh, for the city council to get our feedback. Uh, so I would encourage us maybe to uh, move tonight to suggest to city council that um, further study of this focus on the preferred alternative, uh, which appears to be alternative B. Uh, does, do the other commissioners have an appetite to do that tonight? Uh, would somebody be willing to move along those lines? Um, I'd, I'd just like to see what else we'd like to include in the uh, suggestion to city council in, in, in our vote. So it sounds like we are leaning to B. I mean, it's not, neither is perfect, but it seems like we're leaning that way. Um, but I did want to just discuss, <clears throat> you know, we had uh, Commissioner Rebelo suggesting a no turn on red westbound at Oak Grove. I'd still like to straighten out those crosswalks as much as possible to include this in our suggestion, in our motion. Um, and then to use, to narrow it, I may, you know, maybe we don't go down to 10 feet, but maybe we go to 11, but we use that couple extra feet to put in some kind of a barrier, like we have further north on California Drive, those yellow cones are sticking up because uh, drivers are cutting the corner on the left turns really tight. So we could use you know, a foot or two of a center divide there to cut those, not have the corners cut. Um, we, you know, uh, Commissioner Rebelos and I both talked about uh, the high visibility crosswalks with flashers at Morrell. So let's, maybe we wanna add that to our motion to the city council. Does that sound good to the other commissioners? I, I would concur with that. Commissioner Martos, do you have any thoughts on this? Well, um, so what's staff looking for? A, a concept, um, high level um, concept alternative uh, that we're interested in pursuing. I know the details of the design need to be worked out. Um, and we could throw in a lot of details. Um, but if staff's just looking for whether we want to go with alternative A or alternative B, um, you know, I don't know how many of those details we need to vote on tonight. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before you answer, Mr. Wong, I mean, I, I just I'm going to add in my two cents, and then maybe you could respond to Mr. Martos's uh, questions, which is, I think, I don't know that we have a consensus on these finer points. And if we were really late in the process and this was our only bite of the apple, I, I think I'd be a lot more inclined to kind of give a readout to the city council about all the things that we think need to happen. But the reality is I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities to continue to engineer this uh, and we're going to see it again. So, uh, and I don't know that it would be as useful as it could be this early on. So my inclination is to just keep it clean and, and, and suggest that we focus our efforts uh, and further investigation and design on uh, alternative B. Mr. Wong, uh, why don't you go ahead and respond to Mr. Uh, to Vice Chair Martos's questions. Through the chair, exactly. What we have are two visually different concepts here. One is a traditional, sort of traditional, you have a class two facility in each direction, one going southbound, one going northbound. And then you have another one, which would be, as uh, Ms. Frechette pointed out, one of our first, aside from the uh, Bay Trail, a two-way facility. That's what we're trying to get. Which direction are we moving? Uh, again, these are concepts. They are not, they have not been, they are not designed. We, we're taking a look at what we can fit. And then many of your comments, thank you from the commission. Uh, that was important and we will use those and further tweak uh, the design once we get a direction on which way we're going. So yeah. that's what we're looking for, A or B yeah. in, in uh, the most general sense. And commissioners Lee and Rebelos, I mean, like I said, if I didn't 
if we weren't hadn't just been told that this is coming back to us in the fall and this was our only shot, then I'd say let's get some of these things in there um, because we won't have another chance. But it sounds like this is all good guidance that we could give to the city staff, some of my thoughts included. Uh, and then let's look at it again in September and then we can drill down to the finer points and see where they are. We may learn uh, that there's all kinds of constraints and some of the things we're asking for, you know, are, are doable. Some are reasonably not doable. They have, they have costs and they have unintended consequences. And those are all things we can learn about in our fall meeting when this is, comes back to us. Uh, but I, I think my lean now is to just do a vote uh, advising council that uh, we recommend uh, further engineering and design efforts focus on on uh, alternative B. Do, is there any appetite to do that motion? Um, I don't really have it. Um, I don't. Um see where you where we might have this back on our agenda in September so I sometimes feel this is our one and only shot to get our recommendations in so how are we and I know I won't be I think I emailed you I won't be at the September meeting Mr. Wong can you just refresh our memories here I think early in the presentation the timeline showed this was coming back to us is that right uh through chair, I'll let Ms. Mai, I know we have other meetings. And again, th uh, this is just to get, get the ball rolling, so to speak, because you guys, the commission has not seen anything up until this point. So this is the introduction. Yeah. So I'm the next meeting. I'll have to see based on tonight's comments. Uh, I'll have to see where it lies on the schedule, but uh, I'll see if Ms. Mai can chime in a little bit there. Right. The, the plan is to go before commissioners again with, um, you know, addressing some of the input, um, already looking more in detail of the design. Uh, if not in September, we will be coming to you when we have some of the uh, more um, important questions and comments looked at and, and addressed. So if not in September, you know, we, we can definitely do it sometime in October. There's no date set yet, as far as when we're going to come back to you, but we will have an opportunity to look at the, the more detailed design of this. Um, okay, thank you. Will we have an opportunity? Um, I mean, obviously you've heard some of our comments this evening with what we'd like in the design. At that time, say it's September, October, November, will, we, will it be sufficiently flexible, the design that some of our um, input will be able to be added to it if, if we if these comments aren't incorporated into the plan. That's our goal. We'll definitely look at it um, without discussing this uh, with the consultants. Um, but a lot of what's brought up, they're important points, and so I don't see why we wouldn't um, be able to at least provide an update on on most of these, uh, but not may not necessarily be able to address all. Thank you. It might be helpful uh, if you could just put that last slide up with the schedule so people can see. I think it says 30% to come back to us in fall 2021. There you go. Um, Okay. Commissioners Martos, Rebelos, would you be willing to vote tonight on a straight preference for B over A? Sure, I'll make a motion. Oh. Okay. Oh. Uh, sorry, it's my fault because I threw it at both of you at once. All uh, right. Uh, I'll uh, wait. Uh, Commissioner you know, Rebellos Commissioner... had a question or a comment? Yeah. Yes. Um, I definitely agree that, uh, look, I'm not an expert and uh, I'm not an engineer. So I, I get that um, that there may be things that I'm asking for that maybe aren't uh, viable. And I, I totally accept that. I, I do 
feel very strongly about the high visibility crosswalk, which I think is a very small ask at the uh, Morell Avenue crossing. Um, so, I mean, I, it, it, ch Chair, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it, 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 to, I, I'm willing to, uh, you know, I'm relatively new here, so I'm, I'm willing to compromise. I just want to, I want to uh, really um, make sure that um, we have the opportunity. I think what I'm, I think what would make me feel good is if I knew that uh, the ideas that we put forth tonight, if they are not um, part of our, um, our vote, that we at least will receive um, some feedback about what can work and what cannot work in the future. Yeah. Before we, we vote on the next, you know, in October or fall of 2021. Right. And my view on this, look, we often are put in a position to make <clears throat> recommendations where we know we're not going to, it's not going to come back. And my view on this would be totally different in that case. I'd say, let's get the laundry list in there. Let's make sure the city council understands what we think is important, is important here. But this is very early. I mean, we're, we're not even at 30%. We're gonna get 30% in you know three or four months. Uh, and we can come back at, at that point and say, that, you know, the plan needs to include X, Y, and Z. We think it's missing. If, if they haven't, if our comments haven't been addressed. If I didn't think we were gonna get that opportunity, my view here would be very, very different. Um, but I know I'm looking at the schedule we've been provided and I think we are gonna get that opportunity. So I wanna give, uh, give staff and the consultants the leeway to go back and design this. I think they pr have probably taken careful measure of the comments they've gotten. Uh, and we can have a fuller discussion in the fall about uh, how they were able to realize them. Through the chair? I'm comfortable, yeah, go ahead. Mr. Wong? Just uh, to Commissioner Rebel's point, I think what we will try to do is thank all the comments that we've taken today, as well as some of the ones we've obtained uh, via the survey, we will kind of address, we'll, we'll take note of them. You'll at least get a response, we'll have a response to whether, why that did, could or couldn't work given the particular design. We, we don't mean to, we're gonna, we thank you for your comments and we're gonna shove something back at you and not address it. We, we will address uh, them and yeah, make an attempt to explain through you the uh, reasoning behind it. I just, uh, through the chair, I just wanna point out one other item. Uh, Commissioner Revelo has pointed out a high visibility crosswalk. I think what you're calling out for is a beacon. A high visibility crosswalk in our terms is the, uh, striping, the enhanced striping on the ground. But what you're describing, I think, is a flashing beacon like we have on Broadway and through the roundabout. Just wanted to clarify that. So 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 I'm I'm what I'm asking for is a minimum of the yellow striping, but ideally sure. having the strobes. Sure. And I I believe we have that out there right now and it, it's white striping. Uh, the yellow is associated with schools. So but uh, I think we do, we've, we've, in the last year or two, we have restriped that crosswalk and restriped it to the high visibility. So I imagine that would continue. So as it looks like a mid block crossing. I, I could be, I could be mistaken. I thought it was, I thought it was a white cr uh, crosswalk, but I could be wrong. I'll take a drive through. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I will as well, thank you. This, I, I mean, go ahead. I was just gonna say, this will give us all an opportunity to go walk the corridor mm -hmm. and take a careful look at the physical conditions and, and come back to it uh, and have a discussion in the fall. Yeah, so, so at, at that point, you know, at, at this point, I, I, I think I, if someone wants to make the motion, I, I'm comfortable. Okay. Vice Chair Martos, coming back to you. Sure, I'll make a motion. I move that the Transportation Safety and Parking, Traffic Safety and Parking Commission recommend alternative B to City Council with the understanding that design alternatives will be brought back to the TSPC before final approval is decided. I'll Perfect. second that. 
Okay, uh, let's have a roll call. Commissioner Rebellos? Aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Vice Chair Martos? Aye. Chair Wetton? Aye. Motion carries 4001. Okay, very good. Looking forward to seeing this progress. Uh, I think it's a great start. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to item, oops, wrong spot. Uh, item 6C, Sanchez Avenue, trial multi-way stop update. All right, through the chair. Um, just wanted to point out, this is one that you folks have seen before uh, as part of the pilot stop signs that we installed uh, a little over a year ago at along uh, Sanchez at Paloma. What we're doing tonight is we need to get this at some point in front of the city council to put it in the muni code. So I'll let uh, Mr. Sai, our transportation engineer, go over it. And uh, again, I believe I'll let him uh, complete it. Okay, uh, thanks Andy. Good evening, commissioners. Um, like Andy mentioned, uh, it's been about a year since we've had a trial four-way stop at Sanchez and Paloma. Um, today, we're uh, just giving you an update on the outcome of that one-year trial. And at some point, um, if the trial continues to be successful, like Andy said, we are going to take it um, to the council to make it official in the uh, city municipal code. So, um, of the things we saw, uh, if you would recall, I think we have some new commissioners, but uh, Sanchez and Paloma, it's a neighborhood intersection uh, between El Camino and California Drive. Uh, so it's very close to the bike facility that we just saw. Um, there are two very low volume streets. Um, so by typical standards, they, didn't necessarily uh, warrant a multi-way stop, but uh, we, we did see some exceptions um, or, or some, certain safety issues that we felt um, uh, would allow us to make some exceptions, which ultimately uh, led us to do a one-year trial. Um, so I'm just going through the staff report and uh, Right, so it looks like we actually, right on the dot, uh, came to commission um, one year ago. <laughs> uh, since then, we've had no collisions, uh, reported or unreported. Uh, the feedback from the neighborhood, um, so folks living right on the corner and a few houses down from the intersection have been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, staff observations have also been positive in terms of uh, two uh, issues. Number one, uh, the street has a slight uh, vertical curve uh, when you're approaching Sanchez from Paloma. Uh, and the street is slightly narrow with cars parked on both sides, which does impact the visibility. So once we implemented the always stop, uh, the Observations definitely showed that the uh, turning movements were much improved. Uh, there, there weren't any negative uh, observations to report. Uh, and all signs point to uh, it being a good improvement. Now, uh, there are exceptions, um, uh, limitations to the exceptions that we can make. And uh, part of this trial was to really go and determine, you know, the, the lengths of those exceptions that we'll try and uh, make more common in the city of Burlingame and hopefully streamline uh, other potentially qualifying stop sign requests in low volume neighborhood streets. Uh, like I precluded in the very beginning, you know, a lot of the 
low volume neighborhood streets, um, they simply don't qualify uh, under state guidelines. So uh, this, this trial definitely helped. And uh, if, if you can all refer to the staff report, um, what we're proposing as more of a standard is um, for streets like Paloma Sanchez that have 25 mile per hour speed limits on both streets, um, and both streets are single lane. Um, and there are no other stop controls within 500 feet. Uh, those are the main criteria that might uh, have us uh, allow up to a 65% exception to the volume requirements in the MUTCD, which is quite substantial but um, not out of the ordinary for uh, local cities. Uh, I know that was a lot of information to digest, so uh, maybe I'll open up to some questions. But before, and I would say I'd throw it to public comment, but it looks like we've lost all our attendees. But before we go forward to the other commissioners, um, I just wanna ask Mr. Sai. Are you looking for us to simply endorse making the Sanchez stop sign permanent, which seems like a, I don't want to editorialize before my time. It sounds, that sounds easy. Uh, or are you looking for us to endorse the policy exception that you suggest in the staff memo or both, I guess? Um, are you looking for two actions here or one? Uh, we're not necessarily looking for any particular uh, motion or action from the commission tonight, but mostly to give you an update on the trial that the commission did uh, support about a year ago. Uh, and also um, certainly to give feedback on the uh, criteria that we're using uh, for exceptions to multi-way stops at low volume neighborhood streets. Okay. Um, why don't I uh, give the other commissioners an opportunity to share their thoughts? I'll, I'll change up the order slightly. Uh, Commissioner Rebelos, uh, why don't you go first if you have any thoughts and I'll go to Commissioner Lee. I'm, I'm a little confused. <laughs> if, if um, I, I think I'm, I, I don't have any questions. I, I just, I'm not clear on what we are deciding still at this point. I, the, I, I know that everyone's trying their best to give that a clear explanation, but I, I, I'm not getting it exactly. Yeah, let, let me say maybe what we might be hoping to get from you. So uh, essentially, um, you know, the city follows a state, guide, state guideline for where we place uh, four-way stop controls, right? Um, the, the problem that we face in a small, lower volume city is that most of the time we won't reach the volume requirements that the state said uh, would be okay. Um, it's not out of the ordinary um, to do uh, uh, sorry, uh, up to 70% uh, uh, reduction. So for example, if the state guideline asks for 300 vehicles per hour for eight straight hours. Um, the manual also allows us to reduce that up to 70%, which would be um, 210 vehicles per hour for eight hours. If we met that under certain conditions, we would then be allowed to make an exception per the state guidelines. Uh, but again, for, for local cities, uh, even that's not enough. We, we've oftentimes had to make up to a 50% uh, reduction. What we found out through this trial is that for a street that actually only meets 35% of the state requirements may still uh, have good enough uh, justification for a multi-way stop. And then, so what we're looking is just kind of your thoughts on that, how you might see that impacting your neighborhood. Uh, I'm sure there's a street nearby 
uh, where you might have thought of um, adding an always stop to. Um, all those kind of things are impacted um, by what we talk about today. And so um, actually, so of course, uh, do weigh in on what you think about the stop sign and, and uh, whether it should be made permanent. It, you don't have to necessarily make a motion. Um, and yeah, and, and commenting on the criteria that we're, we presented today. And again, the criteria uh, for making a, a lower volume exception would be uh, number one, um, both streets need to be 25 miles per hour. Uh, so this wouldn't necessarily apply to a street like California Drive. Um, number two, uh, both streets are two lane streets. Um, so you only have one lane in each direction for both streets. So we're really talking about these local neighborhood low volume streets. Um, there's no other stop control within 500 feet. So we don't want a whole series of stop signs that will then lead to other um, maybe uh, undesirable driving behavior. Um, and each street uh, does need to extend uh, 500 feet. So, you know, a tiny cul-de-sac that serves three houses that likely won't be generating a lot of traffic, that's probably not gonna count. Um, and lastly, and mainly the, the implementation of stop signs in all four directions, it really has to improve the overall traffic operations for cars turning, for people crossing, for bikes making different movements. Um, yeah, so, so those five main criteria. Okay, wow, <laughs> good work. <laughs> That's quite a report. I, I, um, I, get, I get most of that. Uh, there's definitely a lot of that that is uh, a little bit nuanced, but uh, so that particular intersection, I mean, I walk through there, is, you know, my comments regarding that intersection in particular, I walk through there uh, maybe three or four times a month. Um, I, I think the stop, I, I think there need to be more stop signs at more intersections. Um, so I am certainly supportive of this particular stop sign becoming permanent. Um, and I am supportive of the uh, ability for us to have a little more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, flexibility in determining where we want our stop signs. So uh, those are my comments, that's it. Excellent, uh, Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would have to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Michael and to Andy for even presenting this. Our, I believe our communities have all been dying to get more stop signs in town. And I, I just remember how hard it was to get the stop sign. I think it was Peninsula and Park. It took years for that for that woman and Laura Hustle going to get a stop sign there. And I'm just thrilled that we're going to reduce our standards. Um, what is the lowest standard we could possibly go with that they allow? Is it 70%, Michael? Could we go down to 70% on this? What's the lowest? To, to clarify, uh, mm -hmm. guidelines just within their um, very high numbers, they allow 70%. They, they need you to meet 70% of 300 per hour, which would be, this is just one of the figures. Yes. But that, would, that would bring us down to uh, 210. And like I said, we've already been going down to 50% where there have been other criteria that, that met. And, and even still, that's a little high um, for a low, relatively low volume street like Burlingame, a uh, city like Burlingame. Uh -huh. So what level are you so, suggesting now, below the 50, like 35%? Was that what I understood? So, right. So the outcome of the trial is that, hey, you know, the implementation made sense given a lot of the criteria at Paloma and Sanchez. Mm -hmm. And criteria, what threshold did that intersection meet? Well, it met 35%. 35? So, 
that's kind of where we set the bar um, for consideration. It doesn't automatically um, qualify something, but it gives us a little more flexibility. I, I think that's absolutely wonderful. And I'm so glad this is coming before us um, because I know in our community over here at Lion Hoag, part of the Lion Hoag study was that they did want to stop sign at Howard and Bloomfield. Um, and unfortunately it does have another crosswalk within 500 feet, but it is about 200 feet from uh, Washington school, which has a huge percentage of walkers and bikers going to that school. And if it would help them, that'd be great. And then Plymouth Way in Bloomfield was another street where they've been wanting a stop sign there. And I believe it does qualify as a school crosswalk um, because it's on the same block as BHS, just the back block. So if that would help Plymouth Way and Bloomfield get a stop sign and um, Howard and Bloomfield, that'd be great. And I'm sure there are other neighborhoods that are just screaming out for stop signs. Um, It'd be great. So I'm all for this. The, and I don't know what threshold the Victoria crosswalk had over by during the Lion Hoag, but that's been working out very well. And I don't think it, it probably didn't even hit this standard. So I think it's just wonderful that you're reducing the standards um, to make Burlingame more livable and more community friendly for us. Um, so thank you. And I'm definitely in favor of this stop sign and and more coming into town where the neighborhoods want it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Good job, staff. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Martos. I'm in favor of making that a permanent stop sign there at Sanchez and Paloma. I think you have all the data you need to move forward on that. And I'm also pleased to hear that the standard is, I don't want to say negotiable, but flexible. So as these things come up case by case, and we see these very often, we have some flexibility to do what's right for our community to improve safety. So um, keep it up and, and, and opportunities that you have to improve the safety by adding stop signs. Um, use this exception as an example to, uh, to justify the, the recommendations. Well, that, that leaves me. Um, you know, I, the new commissioners don't know, but I strongly advocated this stop sign even in the face of um, the desire to consider all other alternatives. I think the people on the street wanted this stop sign from what I understand from Mr. Sai, it's very popular from what I independently understand from uh, the one individual, one family I know on this street, it's very popular. Uh, so it's, that's at, at the at the specific location, I think it's a no brainer. I think there's, there's unanimous consensus. Um, and if you don't need an action from us, then I guess we won't go through it. But if this, does this have to go to city council at all to, to confirm? You're so on mute, Mr. Mr. Wong. In, if he uh, unmutes through the chair, uh, it will eventually go to a staff report for city council. So you know, if you guys want to make a motion, that'd be great. We'll just say the commission supported the installation of the stop in there. Okay, so after my comments, maybe I'll, I'll see that we can do that real quickly since this is pretty uncontroversial. On the, on the policy point, uh, I'm glad we're doing that. Uh, I agree with the comments we've, we've heard to this point and I would take it farther. I think anything we can do to obtain the ability to exercise more discretion and judgment on the part of the city in these instances and not be bound to manuals that someone's writing hundreds of miles away and doesn't know the layout of our city or our circumstances is a good thing. Uh, sometimes I don't think those manuals translate uh, to specific circumstances on our streets. So I think it's very, very helpful um, the, the approach Mr. Sai took here is very, very helpful to say, okay, we've observed a circumstance where this is 
a deviation from the manual and it works. And so we feel comfortable repeating it. I would add one thing to that, which I hope you will consider, which is this location is also on a bike route and a route to school. And I think that's a, a, also an additional factor that you should bake in, which is when your people are saying, hey, we want a stop sign here. There's no stop signs within 500 feet um, and all the other factors. And maybe it doesn't even need to be 500 feet, but this is a bike route. It's a route to a school. Uh, and even if the manual says the warrants aren't there because we know there's a school here because we, we've made this a bike route, that that's another reason why we would look at Sanchez and say, it makes sense as an exception. Uh, and not coincidentally, that, that was exactly how we got the other stop sign in Laguna and Grove using the same logic. Um, and you'll recall that was an argument I was making for why we should be open to doing it here. Uh, and I don't think we should be shy about making that argument again uh, if, if we want to do it again. So all, I, my feedback is all positive. Uh, I, I'd like you to add those factors in. Um, I don't know that we need to vote on the factors, um, but I am very appreciative uh, of, the th of the thinking that went behind it. And, and I, I'm glad that you guys are looking for ways to uh, free your hands a bit. Uh, and use more discretion and judgment, uh, your good discretion and judgment in these, uh, in these circumstances. Uh, and I'm very supportive of it. Uh, here. Just want to make one other comment that, you know, just a bit of caution, right? We, we, we're not advocating that we're putting stop signs at every intersection in the city. Yeah. We still need to have some uh, analysis that goes with that because, you know, the last thing is the unintended consequence where, you, you hear it now, and not necessarily in our city, but in other cities, like no one stops at that stop sign. And then that's the, that's the balancing act that we have to look. Yeah. And that, that, important, we yeah. don't want to have uh, BPD out there all the time trying to capture that. So we're, we're trying to do both. So Mr. Wong, that's understood. I appreciate that. And um. It's not to say we can just go willy nilly and install stop signs everywhere, but it is to say that we're not going to have our hands tied by a by a manual that sets a number that doesn't work because it doesn't take into account that there's a school nearby that we've drawn a bike route through there or whatever. I'll add that I've seen these stop signs. I've been doing this nine, 10 years. I've seen lots of stop signs added. Um, and they, I've only seen them succeed where I've seen stop sign. I have seen stop signs that have this sort of perennial roll through problem. And it's usually a visibility issue and it's usually not a warrant issue. You know, and, and I like the, the one, the example that comes to mind is on Hillside where, you know, there's constantly a tree growing over it. It's down a hill, it's a curve. That's usually the problem. It's usually not whatever someone wrote in the manual uh, in Sacramento. So uh, not to be hyper hyper local, <laughs> but uh, I, I do I do uh, appreciate making sure your hands aren't tied making these decisions. So let's let's move forward real quickly uh, to just to endorse this stop sign on Sanchez. Uh, can I get a motion? Um, I'll move that we endorse the stop sign as a permanent stop sign at Sanchez and Laguna. No, it's know. not Laguna. Sanchez and help me out. Paloma. 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 <laughs> Paloma. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I, don't worry. I, I, you heard earlier, I got an entire lot wrong twice in the minute, so I don't take that as a Chris. Sanchez and uh, Paloma. Paloma. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Very good. Okay, let's run the roll call. Commissioner Ravellos? Aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Vice Chair Martos? Aye. Chair Wetton? Aye. Motion carries 4001. Okay, we can proceed to section seven of our agenda. 
Thank you, Michael. <laughs> okay, engineering and division reports. Sure thing, folks. Uh, give you the update. We just talked about the California Drive uh, Bicycle Facility. We presented you those comments and we'll come back to you at some point after uh, we do a little revising and take uh, try to address those comments. Uh, Burlingame Station pedestrian improvements. We hope to bring you the uh, concepts for this one. Uh, again, concepts, not design. So we can provide comments, but uh, some of the details we'll be, we'll be including, but we'll hopefully next meeting, but we'll, I'll talk to the chair and vice chair about that. Hoover School pedestrian improvements. Again, this is the sidewalk we have up going up on uh, Summit Drive uh, from uh, Hillside Circle down to um, Canyon slash Easton, whatever that street it intersects right there. It's, I'm still unsure, but uh, we're, we're getting started with that. Um, and again, while school's out in, uh, was it a, a week or two, we should be getting to re get ready to uh, break ground uh, sometime soon after and the project should be done by the time school starts in the fall. Sorry, uh, do we have any questions on the first few items? Uh, Commissioner Lee? Yes, start? yes, thank you. Um, for the um, Birmingham Station pedestrian oh. improvements, um, I worked on, uh, when I was on BPAC, I worked with... Uh, Mr. Valesco, I believe. For the last go, thank you. <laughs> I'm coming up with a plan and we submitted it to uh, through BPAC to staff. And I'm hoping it could be put on CAD so when the different uh, suggestions come out that they all are on the same scale and they all look correct and the size of the cars is correct and the street size is correct. I was hoping that could be put on CAD so, and or even just incorporate them into the uh, drawings. Through, through chair, uh, we'll, we'll incorporate that. We won't be able to put it in CAD. I mean, our drawings right now uh, aren't, aren't laid out necessarily. It's still, we've got it down to scale on some of it, but we won't, it's just additional costs that we didn't anticipate, but we are showing, we will have three alternatives to generated by our design team. And we'll, uh, as well as uh, the, we'll call it the BPAC option. Mm -hmm. And we will also, you know, give you the trade-offs of each, including our own and, and the ones that we, and we, I think we have a, trying to find out uh, the pros that you guys have or the, the uh, for your design, why you guys uh, selected that design. So, so would you like, like an email from us about sure. why, I, I why believe that, questions we like? I believe that's what we're after. Okay. I think this might, might have sent something to you. And okay. Uh, okay. And forgive you. me. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot about the Broadway grade separation. Uh, we kind of touched on it today, but uh, again, we're waiting to uh, discuss some value engineering options that will go forth to the council. These are some bigger items that uh, involve the track and costs. And so uh, that, it's at that level right now. And so once that's, to, uh, been determined which direction we can go. Uh, actually, you saw the project manager on that tonight, Mr. Rob Himes. He's the lead on that and the vice president of the, actually he's the president of Mark Thomas, but uh, he's leading that. And once we get that, he'll incorporate and we'll be able to show you similar to what we showed you tonight for California Bike Facility. So that'll be coming up at some point, but not until after council sees it. Um, Could I just questions? ask? Sure. Probably separation. Um, uh, Commissioner Israel and I are on the Broadway subcommittee. So we did go over and look at it and worked with design suggestions and submitted it to staff and, and to Andrew. And um, yeah. have you been able to give them to Cal train and weed them out and take the most important ones? Have, has, is that being used? Our suggestions. It, 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 it is being incorporated. I mean, we'll take. We're, we're taking a look at it. Whether we can, you know, again, we hope to be able to provide a response to you on some of these and why it's not being looked at. I mean, again, you know, the constraints we have. It's you know, the it's existing right away, obtaining right away. Uh, what does that improve? You know, th there's uh, you, there's plenty of uh, items there that uh, dictate a decision being made on the design. So. 
Uh, Commissioner Revelos, did you have a question or? I thought I saw a hand up. No, no, okay. if it, no, All right. sorry. No problem. Uh, continuing on the Broadway pedestrian street lighting project. Unfortunately, since the staff report was drafted, uh, this project, the uh, bids may be delayed again. Um, we were having some bid protests on this. So uh, I will get, get, keep you updated on this. Uh, however, we did, uh, it doesn't necessarily help for construction this year, but we did get a, a two year extension. Initially, this had to be was had to be completed this summer, but we managed to get a two year extension. So eventually we'll get this if soon, but uh, we have that flexibility. So we're not tied in, under the wire. Mr. Wong, can you educate us as to what a bid protest is? So as you know, we we advertise a project and then uh, we, we get the contractor submit bids. And then uh, we usually go with the lowest responsible bidder and so with that, we check the, we check the, the bids, the quotes that they get. And uh, at times, and it's happened a couple of times on this one, the contractors will, uh, because they're so close, they may protest the bid. They, they may find some, uh, something in there that they think that they can challenge and then ultimately uh, potentially reject the top bidder or more likely than not, the city trying to get, keep things equal will uh, rebid the project. So it, it just, and then revise whatever section of uh, the specs or plan that they might have held their protest on, review that with city council and then, I'm sorry, uh, city attorney, and then uh, re, re, again, go through the process again. So, uh, old Bayshore corridor study. Um, the design team, again, will be soliciting community feedback. And once we get that feedback, the, uh, the goal is to bring you, again, that feedback as well as the design concepts back to you and, and give you all that data at a future meeting. I will also give you that date when the, that online survey goes live. This will be the second one. You guys already particip participated in one or always seen the, uh, um, the solicitation or noticing for one. Highland uh, parking garage. Again, we finally have uh, PG&E. I don't think we have power quite yet, but PG&E has the infrastructure there. And we will be powering it up. Hopefully towards the end of this month, we will get uh, uh, the wayfinding signage or the uh, APS signage out in, on the building and then get that ready. So towards, and so we're looking at uh, later this month, but uh, They've got a few things going on there as well, some punch list items. Uh, Commissioner Marta, or sorry, Vice Chair Martinez. So when do we estimate the parking garage is going to open? You know, um, I haven't got the latest that we were thinking at towards the end of June, but uh, I don't want don't want you to bet on that. But uh, it, it's 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 much closer. Obviously, you've seen you've passed by it more than I have. I've walked it. They striped it today. The parking stalls. So it's getting closer. I just can't give you that exact date quite yet. Uh, Commissioner Lee. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, are you done, Vice Chair Martos? Okay. Commissioner Lee. Hi. Thank you. Um, I remember last month I, or two months ago, I brought up um, perhaps getting larger stop signs at the intersection of Howard and Primrose because that's one of our big pedestrian hit intersections and it's going to have so many more pedestrians. Sure. When the garage opens, have you been able to look at putting in slightly larger stop signs? And I believe that intersection is is on the list for maybe getting high visibility crosswalks there also. Let's, um, if you don't mind, uh, Commissioner Lee, let's let's re revisit this on future agenda items. This is that's not agendized, so I, I think we probably should not address that right now. Okay. We can circle back. Uh, just later this meeting to the future agenda items and, and yes. see when we can put it on the agenda and fully address it. Uh, okay. Uh, Peninsula, San Mateo's Peninsula Overcrossing uh, staff. Uh, right now they're in the, Caltrans is in the prep, uh, process of preparation of the uh, CEQA documents. And so the city provided a, a list of concerns in an email 
uh, regarding their scoping of that. So just things that we want them to make sure that they at least address to us or include in that uh, SQL document. So that's gone out to them. And uh, once we get some of the dates of when that SQL document comes live, where you guys and community members be able to comment on it, where they have to address the comments, we'll get that to you. But uh, we obviously we don't have that now since we're just starting that process. Uh, lastly, the Lion Hogue neighborhood traffic calming. Um, we're in the process right now of collecting feedback. If for those of you in the neighborhood, you should have gotten an email or something indicating that there's a survey asking questions about uh, all the improvements that have been done out there. So we, uh, uh, for those of you, it's on, it's on the uh, it's on the staff report, the link. If you want to take a look at it, but uh, we hope to bring that information back to you at some point. Along with, uh, at some point, we will be acquiring more uh, counts just to compare before and after. So, and I believe that is it for tonight. Any questions before I turn it back to Chair Mark? Oh, sorry, Chair Wetton. All right. Okay, well, that gets us to police department reports. Sergeant Perna. Hi, everyone. How are you guys? Very good. Um, so, yeah, if you have the um, report in front of you, there was uh, looks like 15 documented collisions for last month. Um, as I stated before, one of them actually, it's not highlighted. It's the second one uh, from the bottom. That's the, the fatal accident that happened on uh, on Lorton um, near Bayswater. Um, but otherwise there looks like there was uh, all of the, um, I mean, there was four uh, auto pedestrian accidents. And as, 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 as I was reviewing them, I noticed that they, they're all, they seem to all be like right turn accidents. Um, and I've noticed, I don't, I don't know if there's a study on this or not, um, but I've noticed that as cars uh, and technology and they become newer, the pillars, inside the cars have become a lot thicker. And uh, I think that's, I personally think that's contributing to these, um, to these accidents. So I don't know if that's something that, um, you know, those types of diagonal uh, crosswalks that you guys were talking about earlier, that might actually help this because um, it kind of puts the pedestrian a little bit further away from a right turn, a right turning vehicle. I, I don't know that for sure though, but I, I, I think that would, uh, would actually help that because it seems like the ones that are right angle crosswalks are the ones where we have more um, auto pedestrian accidents. But uh, getting into it, is there, are there any ones you wanna speak about, me to speak about directly or specifically, or do you want me to just kind of go to the ones that are on here? The, the one specific question I had, Sergeant Perna, is on the, on the El, El Camino Floribundo at one, you're saying that was a right turn incident as well. Can you just give us where the car was turning, where the right turn was being made? Were they on El Camino going going off El Camino or were they uh, turning on to El Camino going right? And which side? Sure, so this vehicle was, <clears throat> this vehicle is making a left turn onto El Camino um, from uh, from Floribunda, and the pedestrian was walking their dog, and uh, it was a pedestrian walking a dog in the same, I think, walking the same direction as the vehicle was, you know, like basically on the same corner as the vehicle was turning. Um, and the vehicle just wasn't looking. Yeah, I mean, the driver just said that you know it was the typical like I, I didn't see him until it was too late. Um, I think that the driver said that they had, uh, you know, they were stopped at a red light, the lights turned green. Um, you know, it's possible they are not aware of their surroundings. I really don't know, but made a right turn and, um, the pedestrian was in the, you know, was there, it was in the crosswalk. So, uh, it was low speed, you know, minor injuries. Um, was it right turn or left turn? I'm sorry. The driver was making a left turn on the El Camino from, uh, so that was from westbound 
the pedestrian was in was westbound Floribunda. So I'm trying to really picture that. I apologize. So westbound so Floribunda. coming from Hillsboro. No, uh, that, I'm sorry. They going into Hillsboro, they were crossing yeah. from Burlingame into Hillsboro. Yeah, and then the right. Driver. Right. So they were halfway. I apologize. I, I had it um, had it wrong. They were they were more likely. Here, hold on. I have a sketch here. Let me just make sure that I have this correct. Yeah, so they were making a left turn, and basically the the pedestrians were um, just getting the pedestrian and the and the, uh, and the dog were just getting to like the number one lane, you know, the two lane roadway. Um, so the driver didn't, you know, I don't I really know what was going on, but I know that if the driver wasn't aware prior to making try, prior to to proceeding forward and making a left they weren't aware of what was going on in the intersection, um, then basically they, the pedestrian could have been blocked by the pillar. And that's not a reason, it's not an excuse at all. I'm just saying that yeah. I think that those contribute to accidents, that's all. That's, that's helpful. Uh, do, do the other commissioners have any questions about the accidents listed here? Yeah, I do. So Sergeant Perna, the vehicle bicycle accident can you elaborate on that a little bit oh davis and marco polo there yeah two yeah more. yeah so um the 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 bicyclist was riding um east on the south sidewalk of Davis and the vehicle was riding, excuse me, let's see, D2 is driving B2 east on Davis. So the best way to explain this is um, the, dry, the bicyclist rode out from the sidewalk into the street directly in front of a car. So uh, the, you know, this was like in traffic kind of, you know, from like the school traffic from what I understand. So the, the bicyclist is, was, um, the one that was at fault in this collision and it was a juvenile bicyclist was it a was it a middle school kid uh let me double check that just to confirm but i think it was uh yes yeah so a child was hit going to, going to or from school is that what i understand yeah the child rode into traffic like from a basically from the sidewalk, rode into traffic directly, either into a vehicle or directly in front of a vehicle. Yeah. Time of accident was three nineteen p.m. <coughs> it's two. <laughs> yes, for pointing that out, Vice Chair Martos. I think that's a helpful one to hear about. Um, yeah, that should have been uh, highlighted as well. No, it's, <laughs> no worries. Um, any uh, any others? Uh, I, I by the way, when we get to the subcommittee reports, I'll have a, I'll be reporting for Commissioner Israel and I on on uh, school. This will come up, Commissioner Lee. Hi, right, thank you. Um, I see that there was a major injury with the pedestrian vehicle at Broadway and Cappuccino. Correct. You know what happened there? Is that a four way stop there? Broadway um, so, someone it looks like they must have been really badly hurt. It says major injury. For yeah, I mean, what constitutes a major injury um, is, you know, basically anything that is a traumatic condition, um, more than just a complaint of pain. So um, it, it was it was actually a serious it was I would consider it a serious injury. Um, that was uh, let so, It is was low a, speed involving. Do we know? Cappuccino Broadway. Uh, yeah. Cappuccino Broadway is not a four way, I don't believe, but I could pull it up to double check. Let's see. I pull it up. The sketch in this one. Thank you. 
Yeah, so this vehicle was traveling south on Cappuccino, making a left turn, um, the pedestrian onto Broadway. The pedestrian was crossing the opposite direction, so, so it was um, crossing northbound uh, on Cappuccino on the, I guess that would be the east side. And I'm trying to see, I don't believe that's a four-way stop, but I just want to double check something else on the chair. I don't believe it is as well. But there is a major, it's, it's a Mark um, crosswalk though, right? Correct. It's, it's, it's uh, the high visible, or sorry, the beacon RFB is at uh, Paloma. So this one has uh, just crosswalks. And then the driver and just stops and through. stops. I'm sorry, on uh, on cappuccino. Yeah. So the driver just drove, turning into the pedestrian again. Essentially, yeah. Pedestrians, yeah. Was the driver cited? Um, I, I'm not sure in that case. I know they were evaluated for, um, you know, uh, any. Um, you know, to see if they were, if there was DUI or anything, but uh, I don't know if they were cited. I know we did not, I wanted to tell you, I know we did not cite the 12 year old uh, bicyclist though. There was a call. We didn't cite that person, but um, we did uh, evaluate him for, you know, for, for drugs and alcohol. Um, let's see here. The report doesn't always tell me, you know, it doesn't always say in the report if they were cited or not. Uh the person that was killed, was that driver cited? Um, yeah, that driver was arrested. Uh, the, the driver actually uh, killed their passenger. So. Oh, the passenger, that's right. Yeah. It's really a sad, I mean, I can't comment too much because it's an open investigation with no. the DA's office, but it, you know, it was a, a, a really unfortunate, sad, um, Sad situation. Yeah, it's a tragedy. Thank you. Of course. Commissioner Ravalos, I think you I see your hand up. Yes, sir. Yes, sorry, I was just switching through windows here. Um so yeah, the, I, I wanna go I, I wanna get back to the Broadway and Cappuccino, but I, I also wanted to inquire about the California and Douglas. Uh why don't we? Is that, you, oh, sorry. Go ahead, sir. But I have the cappuccino. Incident it's easier for you. Screen. Okay, yeah. we can do that. So um, that was at four forty-five p.m. sixteen forty-five. So it was light out. Um, that's that that right. I'm so super familiar with that intersection. It's the Broadway Grill right there. You have the. Um, what was the? I mean. Was there anything in the investigation to determine why they did not see the pedestrian there? No, I mean, there's not much we could do by beyond asking them what happened right. in the vehicle and looking for witnesses and you know looking for surveillance cameras and things like that. Um, the uh, I mean, the drivers was the driver had a stop sign in this case. I mean, it wasn't a four way stop, but they were on Cappuccino, so they had a stop sign. So yes. they. Uh, you know, claimed he made the stop and made a left turn. And uh, he said that yeah, he didn't attempt, there was no attempt to avoid the collision because he never saw the pedestrian was what was the statement given. Yeah, at that time of day, I mean, that's a very busy area right there, especially with the Broadway grill there and, and the, the different shops and the different corners. And so was there, what, do you, does the PD uh, keep track of whether or not that was a private vehicle or a commercial vehicle or anything like that? Yeah, we could tell you. I mean, what do you mean by commercial? Be like an eighteen wheeler or something like that? No, like was it a was it a, a business? Of, uh, you know, like a uh, uh, you know, was it a, uh, a a delivery vehicle? Was it a taxi cab? Was it a, uh, a somebody in their just car just driving? home yeah this was a private Anything like vehicle that. privately owned it was vehicle. a private vehicle yeah. that's interesting yeah I, I that's man i mean i uh 
I don't understand. I, I mean, I know that intersection so well. I just can't imagine how they did that. But it, it brings to mind that um, those intersections there on Broadway, uh, uh, in, in what you said about earlier about the pillars on the newer cars, I've rented a couple of vehicles uh, for work over the last uh, two or three years. <laughs> Not to pick on a certain brand, I won't, I won't say the brand of vehicle, but the pillars were so wide that it was really a, a, an issue. So that's interesting. So it, so thank you though. But uh, so the, the California and Douglas, was that on California or was the person crossing Douglas? California and Douglas. So this person actually was, um, this, the pedestrian was at fault. The, the driver was proceeding southbound and the, the driver I think was crossing um, eastbound, just jaywalking. Um, step basically from the curb essentially into a lane of traffic while vehicles were you know proceeding straight but i could see give me one second let's hear you so i could have the actual uh yeah so this was like um just stepped right into the number two lane of traffic um, the driver was north, I thought they were southbound, they're actually northbound California. Um, pedestrian had a minor injury. Let's see here, so from the curb line, across from it, so it's basically right in front of the convenience store there at 505 right. California. So isn't it true that a crosswalk, even if it's not painted, extends from the corner? to the opposite curb? Like even if it's not painted, it's- um, Yeah, so it, at, the, at, the, at the end of a block, um, oh. that's true if there's, but it's also, this was between two signalized intersections. Yeah. So there's there's the one at Oak Grove and then there's the one at, um, what would be the next signalized intersection? But in any case, I mean, um, yeah. So the driver just said he just stepped out, didn't uh, hear or see any vehicles. Um, Makes you wonder why the is going that way. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't at the, uh, from what I could see here, it wasn't, it was like mid block. It wasn't like at a corner. At a corner, wouldn't that would be a legal crossing, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be illegal, yes. Um, assuming you, you proceed when it's safe to do so. But this was like right in the middle of this. So the pedestrian could have went down to Doug, you know, crossed at Douglas. This was like more north of Douglas. It looks like almost to like, you know, like past the convenience store there. Um, so it's just, it was kind of an unsafe place. It, it's like, it looks like they probably parked in, the, I don't know for sure, but it looks like they probably parked in that parking lot, uh, uh, you know, and then we're crossing there. And crossing, okay. From the northernmost part of the um, from the northernmost part of the parking lot. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Okay, thank you. Of course. <clears throat> okay, um, if there's nothing further, I thank you, Sergeant Perna. I think we could move to the. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, Seven D, uh, TSPC Chair Commissioner's Communications. Uh, through the chair, I, I believe, uh, Farmer's Market, C. Oh, Not sorry. that much on that, but. Um, well, it's open now. Uh, it might be a good time to. Uh, I, I'm trying to think. I think there was some feedback that we had discussed. We thought we could get at the Farmer's Market. Now I'm not remembering which conversation that was and with who. Um, I suppose uh, we should start trying to organize to return to the farmer's market. Uh, it might be a little tricky with summer vacations. I know that I'm gonna be out of town for a couple of weeks uh, in late June. Um, maybe something to uh, try and do in July to target to do in July. Hearing no objection. Commissioner Martos, we used to be a good 
good attendee at the farmers markets? Chances? So I'm gone third week of July into August. Um, okay. so we do it prior to the third week of July. It's a possibility. Okay. I'd have to get all the signs and all the all the um, garb from Commissioner Wander. Yeah, Commissioner Wander. We should see if the CEC plans to return, and then we can. Yeah, that was helpful. Resume with the joint arrangement. Right. Otherwise, we can buddy up with the popcorn yeah. maker or something yeah. like that. And then, and two of us can sit with commissioner with former <laughs> commissioner Wander. It won't be a frown act yeah, yeah. Uh, problem. That's, that's right. That's right. So, um, okay. So why don't we why don't we park that one? Uh, no, no pun intended. Until July and see if we're ready to do another one. Uh, do one maybe the second week of July. And I'll I'll try and reach out to former commissioner Wander. Uh, and see if we could do it that soon. Okay, so that brings us to 7D, uh, Commissioner's Communications. Does any, uh, anybody have something? Commissioner Redlos? Yes, uh, I just wanted to comment. I, uh, I noticed that the uh, crosswalk timers at the Truesdale and uh, Magnolia were pretty short. Um, you have Burlingame Plaza on the northeast corner with a lot of uh, retail and services. You have assisted living on the northwest corner uh, with, and there's a, uh, actually, yes, the northwest corner. And then there's a major medical center, of course, Mills Peninsula Hospital on the southeast corner and then post-acute care on the southwest corner. And uh, and I, I can't, uh, I was thinking about it the other day and I was thinking, I never once in my life thought that uh, that intersection would be such a major part of my life, but it's a daily part of my life. And uh, uh, it, more so for my wife. Uh, and so uh, I sent, I just wanted to uh, address that. I, I sent a, a video of the short crosswalk timers there to uh, staff, to Andrew. And I was uh, surprised to find out that someone had already uh, mentioned their concern about this on the Access Burlingame app uh, just in May. So uh, it, 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 I just wanted to uh, sort of commend staff that uh, I, I understand that they're already working on this timer issue. So I'm, I'm very uh, happy to hear that. And um, frankly, I'm just looking forward to uh, hearing updates about how that uh, is resolved. If it's not resolved already, it may be for all I know. I haven't been there uh, since I last discussed it with Andrew, uh, but uh, that, those are my comments. I just wanted to sort of acknowledge that this, I noticed this and I was very happy to find out that staff was already uh, dealing with it. Excellent. Um the only one I'll say, and well, you know what, I'll save it because we're going to get to the downtown that I can mention it during the downtown subcommittee stuff. So uh, if there's no others, why don't we go to the subcommittee items and close out section seven? If there's no objections. Okay, so why don't we talk about the subcommittees? For 8A, we heard about the progress of the Highland Garage. Uh, I will note that I went to lunch downtown uh, with my daughter, and I think it was a Thursday, uh, and parking was pretty tight. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was observing the usage of the restaurant parklets uh, at the same time as observing the fact that it is not so easy to get a spot at lunchtime. Uh, and we can revisit this in the future agenda items about, because uh, I know there may be a decision coming soon about renewing parklets. Uh, Vice Chair Martos, I see your hands up. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Wong, I parked in the library parking lot, upper deck, and I noticed the very top deck was um, um, Shed. roped off, or yeah, blocked off. Do you know anything about that? I do not. The only thing I 
may be able and may um uh, i'll have to check with uh uh, Sergeant Perna, and maybe not tonight, yeah. but I believe at night there were some activities and PD has asked if we, it's during the day. It, it was, yeah, and it was on a Friday when parking is needed and it was blocked off. That very, the very top upper yep. deck. Yep. I will find out more about that. I do Just not curious know. about that. I don't know if there was construction going on there or what, what was going on, but I noticed it was blocked off on a Friday about five ish. Okay. So there, therein lies the subcommittee. I, let's come back though. Don't let me forget. I want to talk about when, when for future agenda items about this parklet issue. Because I know there could be a decision that needs to get made sooner rather than later about that. Um, that brings us to the Broadway Parking Traffic Issues uh, Committee. Uh, Commissioner Lee, you're the sole member here tonight. Yes, thank you. So I, I alluded to it earlier. I met Commissioner Israel and I met. We came up with uh, suggestions of what we thought would improve the um, usage of the Broadway grade separation. And we've submitted those comments to staff and they're looking at them and doing the best they can with them. So that, that's what we did. We did a lot. Okay. Uh, so with that, we can move to the school traffic committee that's uh, myself and Commissioner Israel, who's not here. So we had a, um, a very constructive walk audit uh, with um, Rusty Hopewell, uh, with, with- Parisi. Parisi, are the consultants? The, yeah, I was gonna say the consultants uh, with Mr. Wong, uh, Ms. Mai, uh, Mr. Velasco, Commissioner Israelit, myself, uh, Chair Beatty from BPAC. Uh, it was a good group. I, I hope I'm not leaving anyone out. Uh, we did a pretty good walk from, you know, we timed it. So we basically were at the school when BIS uh, dismissed its students, walked, sort of saw how that went and then walked down to all the way to Lincoln to see kind of the dismissal coming from the other direction, looked at key intersections and then worked our way back up, up Davis where we just learned about an accident um, and talked through uh, some, uh, you know, the easy thing I think is to do some stop sign warrants and some of the key intersections, including one we've discussed before, Bernal and Devereaux, and we heard about it in the public comments. Um, but also considering some ideas for traffic flows, because something that I think even as a, I'm into my fourth year as a BIS parent, and I don't think I appreciated how badly constrained Casada is uh, at that, you know, at this drop off and, and pickup times because I live walking distance and avoid it like the plague. And I for now realize for good reason. Um, and that's not even, you know, they, we, in normal times, we've been sending a, bu a city bus up there uh, or some sort of muni bus up there. So it could get even worse. Got an ice cream truck in the middle of the action. It was quite a scene. Um, I think, I think we've been very successful. Well, I, I won't editorialize about it here. I, I think there needs to be, I know there's going to be some further study of possible traffic flow solutions, uh, by city staff. I think that's great. Uh, we've had a lot of success in the past and, and I'm looking forward to working with city staff on that and seeing that come back, um, maybe hopefully later this year. Um, uh, I hope, and we'll wait to see what we get from uh, the school district. Yeah. Um, what What are we, I'm sorry, what exactly are we waiting to get from the school district in this? So they're the ones performing the uh, the walking audit, right? We'll see the okay. results of that. So we, we need to okay. see that and then uh, 
and just discuss it with them because um, yeah, some of those yeah. may be, we'll have to see what those improvements are. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I think we'll try and have to try and encourage a lot of facilitation, a lot of communication on that. Um, I would say based on what I saw, it's urgent. It's, it's definitely something I'd like to see progress on sooner rather than later. Um, Citywide transportation alternatives, uh, Commissioner Rebelos, we, we did meet, uh, and maybe you want to talk about the uh, the one offering that, that we talked about where you had some communications uh, with, with the company. <laughs> I have to look at my notes. I, uh, it's been, a, I, I'm, was that the um, electric? Yeah. What was yes, their name okay. again? Circuit. Circuit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yes. So I, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, was uh, in, the, I think in our previous meeting, uh, transportation alternatives uh, meeting uh, the previous month, uh, we, uh, I learned that you were interested in, in sort of alternative ways for people to get in and out of downtown uh, and to allevi alleviate any uh, parking issues or potential parking issues going into the future. And uh, so I, uh, I recalled a uh, service I saw in Santa Monica called Circuit. And so uh, through my network, I reached out to them uh, to find out more about them. And so they uh, uh, provided me with a qu quick uh, sort of PowerPoint uh, overview, high level overview of what, uh, what the different things they do um, and uh, a, ba a very basic uh, outline of uh, their operations. And so basically uh, what they do, they use uh, electric powered uh, vehicles that uh, seat uh, up to five passengers, six, including the driver. Uh, they use uh, sponsorships primarily to, to uh, fund uh, their, their program. They have employee drivers. They use an app that, uh, uh, so say for example, um, uh, you're dining in, uh, on Burlingame Avenue and you live in the East, Eastern Edition and you go to dinner. So you would summon this little electric vehicle to pick you up. They, they'll probably pick up other people as well. Um, and then that would bring you to your restaurant. And then later on, you could use that same app to maybe go from one end of downtown to another, or maybe from Bur Burlingame Avenue to Broadway, and then eventually back home. And uh, that's just one potential scenario. Uh, and so because they have employee drivers, there's uh, uh, the ability for them to have a lot more control of where the drivers go, where they wait, where they drop off, where they pick up. And so that means instead of like, you know, with a lot of services you have now, the driver is just double parking on Burlingame Avenue, blocking traffic while they're loading, unloading the passengers. These they could have designated pick up and drop off spots so they know that they have to pull out of the way, pull into a parking lot or or whatever. So it's it, it's a it's a very uh, interesting uh, product and service that they have. They have different ways to fund it. They can be funded through subsidies. They can be funded through sponsorships, uh, sometimes grants, uh, a, a zillion different ways. They work with a number of cities. On the West Coast, the ones I'm familiar with are San Diego and Santa Monica. Uh, they've been able to operate uh, through the pandemic with CDC protocols because the vehicle is uh, has two seats in each row. There's three rows. Each seat has its own unique door and they put partitions down the middle and in between the rows. So everyone is sitting in their own little spaces. Very interesting. So if anyone wants, I can share uh, the materials they sent me. Um, it was just, you know, an inquiry and I, I shared my uh, materials in the contact with uh, Chair uh, Wetton. And uh, 
that's basically it. Um, but it's it's intriguing, and and I I hope that we can explore that more. I, I I'm intrigued by the idea um, of of this uh, circuit. Um, but if anybody wants, I'm glad to share the information. Uh, that's all I have at the moment. I'll add really quickly. I think I used it circuit when I was in Santa Monica several years ago uh, with my daughter. I think they kind of got, got us from the hotel to the beach um, and they were sort of on demand. I think they do work a lot with hotels. I, I think it'd be interesting in, in talking to any of these providers, just like what their economic model is, how they, you know, how they, they're not gonna do it for free. So how do they propose to get compensated uh, for doing this kind of thing? And, you know, how would the city then play in and, and, and you know, get them to provide the service? Would, would that be something driven by the by our chamber or by the city itself? Or it'd be a user paid thing. Um, it's just worth, worth finding out more information. Um, yes. It was interesting. Uh, and you reminded me, I'm sorry. No, go you ahead. You reminded me, what, one, of, one of the other uh, things that had occurred to me was with our new parking garages that potentially you could have a, you know, where people could park their car, go straight to the parking garage, alleviate the traffic situation in the core of the city of people going around looking for parking and they could take these little carts. Number of scenarios. I, I, yeah. I won't go down that road because I could talk forever. So. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try and find out some more uh, and then, then we can bump this up to future agenda items. Um, we have an item here for uh, community bicycle and pedestrian advisory. Uh, I know we spoke earlier tonight about the California project and you guys passed on the item at 6A. So uh, is there anything to cover here? I don't think there's anything new because we only got as far as the bike lanes tonight. Yeah, got um, it. It was, <laughs> you know, it was kind of like our discussion. So um, fair enough. Um, anything else, Commissioner Revelos? Okay, I said it all. Uh, so let's move on to future agenda items. Um, I have one, but before, which I everyone already knows, but uh, Commissioner Lee, I encourage you to bump something you mentioned to this, so I'll allow you to return to it. All right, thank you, Chair. Um, I have a few, actually. The first was that we could discuss um, in the future, wouldn't take too long, just the status of the study on putting in a larger stop signs at the intersection of Howard and Primrose. Um, you know, I just feel they're really far off to the right, and since it is the big pedestrian hit zone, and potentially because it could become worse with a new parking garage um, inviting so many more pedestrians to cross there. So the other thing, I believe Howard and Primrose is also on the list for high visibility crosswalks. But in looking at the parking garage, we might wanna add Howard and Highland to that list because that's a super strange crossing there by the, you know, by the former bus stop that I think now has Parks and Rec in it. But to make that, when we do the Howard and Primrose crosswalk, maybe add the Highland and Howard. Um, the other two things I thought for the agenda, I was with friends and talking about, you know, what a rough time retail is having. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, retail with uh, actual rent that they have to pay, like our shops on Broadway and Burlingame. And one suggestion came up was to November and December when shoppers are out hopefully in droves on the avenue or Broadway, that they we have free parking for them, November and December, or from Thanksgiving through New Year's, we offer free parking at the some of the parking places. They still have to have a timer, otherwise we'll have every employee parking on the avenue, but um, to have free parking considered for the shopping months of November, December. That was one suggestion. Um, and then the other was, I believe the city is doing speed limit studies on some of the roads right now. Is it a 10 year thing? And then maybe to put it on the agenda that the speed limit studies, let's say the average speed is 
I think it might be prudent for our committee to suggest that the city request the city to round the speed limit down, not to round it up. I believe Truesdale's was rounded up the last time it came up. And now it's like, a, you know, it's a major freeway, even though it's a neighborhood. So maybe to add a speed limit study and to ask them to round it down for our community. That's it. Those were my three ideas. Okay. Uh, I think this. I think the speed limit calculation is is a state rule. I, I don't think we have a lot of control over that. I wish we had more, but through the chair, um, we we they force us to round up. Yeah. So it wasn't a decision to round round it up. It, it's mandated by yeah. them. That's fact. It, they changed that policy uh, before I started, and uh, it, it was in San Mateo when I was there. So it started prior to 2013 that they, that was the state had passed down that that was a new directive and it definitely upset a lot of folks because for that flexibility and cities argued against it and it is where it is so yeah. we do not have flexibility in that um i so i mentioned my item before which is i i suspect there's going to be a decision made about extending parklets and i'd like us to be able to look at that through the chair yeah so council will be talking about that on uh, uh august 12th so on the july meeting we'll most definitely have a discussion on parklets and we can have that discussion on uh what you how to frame that because uh you know we'll need to notify if that if that's your goal if the we need to let the bids know and things like that if that's what you want so we should talk offline and yeah, let's talk offline. We should let the bids know and we should absolutely cover it in July. Um, if I can find the time, I'm going to be, I'll, I'll even try and hit the downtown, do some observation. Uh, I will tell you, like, as I mentioned, the, the parking, no, we, the Highland Gore, I, I am suspicious of any data. The Highland Garage isn't open yet. We're still not fully reopened for COVID. So we're not in the, you know, steady state, but I, but anecdotally for what little it's worth, you know, go downtown, it's hard to get a spot again. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. And I, I would add, if you look around at the usage of the parklets, it's, you know, and look, it, it may be different at the dinner hour, but there's a lot of parklets where You've got multiple tables on the sidewalk, multiple tables in the parklet. You could easily consolidate the tables to the sidewalk, um, allow the sidewalk dining and, and, and put the parking back. Probably not a popular point of view with, uh, with some of our restaurants, but again, it just depends on how fast we spring back to normal life pre-COVID conditions. So, um, Okay. Uh, does anybody else have uh, anything else they want to bring back here? Holy time. Through the, uh, yep. the chair, I have something after. Uh, we have Burlingame Station. We may be ready. We may be bringing, but I'll find out where that is. And I'm sorry, Vice Chair Martos, I cut in. And then uh, at some point, we could talk about EV vehicles. Oh, yeah. EV vehicles for, just to clarify. Uh, I, I believe Mr. Ms. Michael had uh, something she wanted to present, potentially present regarding, I think, some of the reach codes and uh, how, how we're going. I'll let her explain. Maybe, how. What, if you could um, maybe connect I'll, I'll us to get by that email. before we have our meeting. Yeah, but even if you could connect uh, Ms. Michael and myself, and I could talk to her a little bit about it and see if she's baking in some of the concerns I had and we could even reach out to the planning commission because it, it might involve them in terms of what's going on in the buildings. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Martos, I just see you shaking your head. I don't know why, but, <laughs> but, but you're up if you have something. Looks like you froze. No. You picked a heck of a time to freeze. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh no, <laughs> this is like the last item we've got. Um, he, he's coming back. He's coming back. Hello, Vice Chair Martos. I am back. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, I just with, with the Highland Garage opening soon. I want to make sure that we look at safety of crossing Howard, Bolted Highland, and maybe Lorton. Um, if there's any need to improve things. So I, I'd like to maybe get that on the agenda somewhere. Oh, One yeah. So things. thank you, uh, Vice Chair Marshall. So, so Andy, if you could give us a sense of there's a good time to slot that in. It sounds like July might be pretty busy, but maybe uh, August. And, and And the other one that I nearly forgot is uh, the southbound California at Broadway at Broadway, north yes, of Broadway. We, we've got yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. I, through the chair, I shot you over the uh, email prior to our last meeting. It kind of just gave, give you a little crystal ball glimpse of what, what's coming up in our future. Yeah. Um, if we're done, I, I have one thing that I forgot to mention earlier and it's, it's a, Good thing it just the streak that we're kind of on. So uh, between last meeting and this meeting, uh, we were notified that uh, they went through another round, but there was a safe, seamless, quick strike program that we had applied for, uh, for uh, try to implement some of those improvements we have in the bike ped mash plan, the striping, the signage, some of those. And uh, we weren't selected. We didn't make the cutoff the first time they were close. And then they had a reallocation allocation of funding. So we were selected. So we're, we have 200,000 that will be applying to uh, a lot of the, uh, the quick builds, the striping ones that we've already identified in the uh, bike ped master plan that you saw last month. And in a way of answering the question, and it involves uh, Howard and uh, Lorton. Some of those where we're going to be doing some... Uh, fold outs to try to improve and to try to get a better pedestrian visibility. So not to jump that one, but we're, we're addressing that concern. I wanted to say that earlier and we will be able to do it sooner than later and without city funds. Well, sorry, we, we have a match, but we won't have to use it all. And so uh, we'll be just be going off that, that checklist. So we're talking uh, signing and striping. We're talking some additional rapid flashing beacons that we've outlined in many areas that we'll be able to install sooner than later. So, yeah, uh, uh, there's yeah. a, there, there, oh, sorry. There's a cross. Um, yeah. There's a crosswalk with black spray paint, black spray paint, more than 500 feet from my house, but one that I see uh, pretty regularly. We'll that, be reviewing um, that one as well. Yeah, for yeah. And you yeah. saw tonight that, that that'll give us some flexibility in what we do there. And I, I don't disagree that that one. Yeah. yeah it, it's no different than we've done at all corners of schools. We've tried to yeah. get them there. So, yeah, but Excellent. yeah, no, I thought I'd leave that with you folks. That's good news. Well, that's, 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 uh, Thank Miss my, yeah. So going back to your, uh, email, Andy, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, suddenly we've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline here. So I think maybe we should meet, and this is for vice chair Martos and myself, maybe we should meet sooner rather than later and see if we have, maybe it would be good to have a meeting where we roadmap that stuff out and say, cause it's not all going to happen in July and August. Yeah. <laughs> so like say, okay, July, August, September, October, um, based on everything we heard tonight, it sounds like we've got four months worth of stuff. Yeah. And a couple of those doing. items, uh, folk, folks. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Seems like a plan. Okay. Well with that, I think we can uh, call this meeting adjourned. I hope everyone has a great start to their summer. Sounds like some vacation plans and fun stuff ahead for uh, the reopening of 21. Congratulations, everyone. We got through on the other end. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye.